It's March Madness, baby, and we're pumped up here at Pub Sports Radio. We don't just have one contest for you, two contests to celebrate the greatest tournament on earth. The first contest is our NCAA Confidence Pool. You select a roster of teams based on who you believe will advance the furthest in this year's tournament. Each entry receives 90 points to select their teams based on a reverse ranking method, meaning a number one seed will cost you 16 points of your available 90. A number two seed will cost you 15. A number three seed will cost you 14. A number 16 seed will cost you one point. Once you have your roster of teams, points will be awarded for each win selected teams accumulate during the tournament. A first round win by one of your teams will get you 10 points. A second round win, 15. Sweet 16, 20 points. Elite 8, 25. Final 4, 30. And if one of your teams wins the NCAA championship, you will get 50 points. We are also doing a regular bracket pool. Just like last year, our guy Matty Ice, star the taint play of the day, was our champion. We're doing it again. But this year, we're using the Fibonacci sequence for points. Two points for a first round win, three points for a second. It's two, three, five, eight, 13 for a final four win, and 21 if you win the NCAA championship. Just like you've done every year. You fill out a bracket predicting the outcome of each game in the tournament. Can't wait, man. Can't wait. And the best news about it is, Jimmy, only $50 each to join there. $100 total to join both contests. Brackets must be submitted by Thursday at the first tip. Can't wait, Jimmy. And guess what? All that money goes right back into the prize pool except for a less than $2 convenience fee so shout out to all you guys entering can't wait big prize pool awaits the winners top 10 percent gets paid in each contest Ooh-wee. march 21st 12 15 p.m eastern we tip off for march madness get that cash fibonacci seat what the fuck is fibonacci jim that sounds a little bit iffy to me i don't know about that yeah, he's a composer from Fibona- Italy. Fibonacci? Yeah, All right, I'll join it anyway. Even though Death I don't and blind. Death and blind. blind. Yeah, definitely. Welcome blind. to Pub Sports Radio. His name's Jimmy the Back. My name's Peter Lozhag. We do this every Tuesday. Man, it is. It is March Madness. It's fun as hell. I'm relatively prepared. We're going to cover NHL, NBA, and, of course, all the college basketball. Uh, and then, also, there's a baseball game. We're going to cover that. I didn't even know there was a baseball game, but a lot of people think that I don't have the ability to sound like I know what I'm talking about uh, when I have no clue what I'm talking about, but I do, and I'll prove it today. I will cap that game, even though I didn't even know it was happening until before the show. Uh, Jimmy the Bag, how you doing, pal? I am like endorphins flying. I'm I'm high without oh, being high. I'm so excited about heading to Texas tomorrow with new yeah. worker, Mr. Gokster in tow. Uh, I'm just, I couldn't be more excited. I'm just so pumped up. I, I know what's ahead of me and it's, you know, it's everything that the funny thing about when we all get together, it's everything you imagined it to be. It, it, yeah. It, there's no, it's not like last year was this year's going to be much bigger than last year. Every year has been different. Uh, this year will be our biggest uh, celebration of gambling, but it's just, you know, nonstop sports gambling with your best friends at, you know, where I'm at in my life. This is my favorite, by far favorite weekend of the year. It's the only thing I really, you know, really, really want to be doing is is, is sitting in the Southtown 101 with everybody uh, with the first round of March Madness and poker. Uh, and there's so many cappers that I work with so often every day that I've never met uh, in person before. And then there's, you know, best friends that I get to reunite with. So. Uh, I'm, it's going to be great. I'm it's going to be great. You know, it really is. You know, people like, oh, why do we do this? And well, the community. But then when you're there, it really is. It really is just 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 a great bunch of guys who most of us would never even connect. And, you know, if we were just living our normal, stupid lives, going to the mall, watching bullshit movies. And and now we're going to have this wonderful weekend. I'm so looking forward to it. Jimmy our squad, a squad. So magic. We have every oh, yeah. culture, every culture, every age group. It's just like, we do. Uh, yeah, it's 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 just like it's. It, it, and it's it, wonderful. Jimmy at the last Bubbleusa, Jimmy uh, Gomez gave me a, a Joe Burrow card. I gave Dabby Cab my special cane that he yeah. loved. I gave Jose Bouquet my El Max hat, which he wanted. Still wear it's it. just such a wonderful thing all around. Yeah, that's yeah, my backup it, hat. Jose, <laughs> you know, it's funny because uh, at Bubbleusa, Pete's always lurking. He's always lurking. Yes. Right? Always lurking. He always, yeah. He, he, I, I sent uh, Jose a pick from last year. 
where if you can look closely, there's Pete up on the top left, just lurking. Yeah. Uh, your yeah, don't left. forget C-Mac. Don't forget C-Mac. C-Mac's also lurking over there, just lurking. Just lurking and watching uh, there. Uh, oh, man, I'm so pumped up. I just, it's, uh, it's I, you know, also, I'm I'm healthy. You know, I'm not, right. I'm not coming in sick, which is so important on these trips. Another thing is I'm not going to show up destroyed. I'm not showing up <laughs> absolutely intoxicated <laughs> of, of sauce. Well, that's, well, you know, I don't know if that's going to be true yet. We'll see if that happens. I, you know, at least I will be full of rest, right? Yes. Like I, I'm not showing up the last two years. I've show, I've taken the, the five, six in the morning flights and, and, and got on board just like just so drunk the first year with gokster i mean that was just uh oof. yeah that was that was the pollutant uh jimmy yeah, by the way yeah uh, two things real quick first big shout out to al cervic he's the guy that sent me this hat lovely hat that i got in the mail shout out to him and jimmy yeah. i have well this is the box and i have your thing and i'll show you right now jimmy okay i'll show you right now what you got it's our favorite football team the falcons <laughs> <laughs> the Falcon. So, shout out to uh, Al Cervix for the lovely gifts. Shout out to you, my man, and I appreciate the uh, the stickers as well. Oh. One last call. I'm gonna keep saying it, and don't be afraid to hit me up because I actually enjoy doing it. It's a great way to meet everyone early. If you are coming in, flying in, just DM me on Twitter. Let me know. I'll come scoop you. I'll come scoop you, Justin McAvoy. I see. I see you landing on Thursday here. I'll come scoop you. Don't worry. Uh, I have a list of people I'm going to go. Two twenty one is already. a tricky time, though. It's a tricky time because we'll be live. Yes, yes, we are. No, trust me. I have backup producers as well, so thankfully they'll help me as well. Yeah. Um, but yes, I'll come pick you up, my guy uh, Justin McElvey. Don't worry, uh, Mike is coming that day, along with my best friend as well. There, they'll be both be coming in at the same time. I've got Jimmy Gokster. I've got all these guys set up. Pete, let me know as well, obviously. And if you want a. Uh, you know, a, a pickup, just let me know. And yes, uh, well, you Ooh, know, right. interesting news here from the chat in capital, uh, capital letters. Uh, well, does that mean you? Oh. Is that you? Apparently not. <laughs> I'll go fuck myself, Justin. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry, Justin. Fine. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. We set the tone early. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, uh, Jose, actually, come back here because we need to drop one more thing before we say what up to everybody and, and get started capping because we have a huge card, enormous card, uh, is our contests. So mm -hmm. uh, people are signing up. Uh, as of last night, we had 17 signed up for the bracket, 10 for the confidence pool. Uh, we want lots more, but that's a good start. You know, I, we know that people sign in late. So uh, the confidence pool, again, uh, Jose, I don't know if you want to bring up the side screen for us, but it's, 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 they have, we have it set up. Sean did a great job. He set up just like the bracket. You know, if you pick a number one seed, you'll see that it costs you 16 of your 90 points. Yep. You have 90 points to put together a roster of teams, and you only put them in, you know, b before tip off, and then those, that's your roster of teams throughout the tournament. And then, so, you know, uh, reverse ranking order. So a, a, a one seed costs 16, two seed costs 15. It's really, really fun. It's really, really fun. And I think it will, you know, work out nicely. And then we just have the regular bracket. So both are up here. Uh, you know, you need an account with us at Pub Sports Radio. Uh, also, it's it's less mm -hmm. than less. It's like less than two dollars that is taken from the credit card fees, which is the lowest you'll find. Uh, anywhere in, in any contest on any site ever and uh, anywhere everything else goes all into the prize pool so you need to have your account you need so fifty dollars each you get your ticket uh, and then you know fill out your bracket and do the same with your confidence pool by tip off on thursday so lots of time to get in uh, and please join us please join us in these contests they're extremely fun we get to compete against each other and and uh, it's just really really enjoyable and the more people we have going in them the the, the bigger they can you know the more opportunities we'll have to have them. So please, uh, please join in and support us with these contests. Uh, we're pumped up, man. So can you show just to, so when you pick a one seed in the uh, confidence pool? Yes. Let me go, over, go, go over to the to confidence pool here. And then so the as you see, if, if you take UConn, you'll see up to the top. If you go up to the top here. Uh, yep. yeah, the top let me go back. Hold on. Okay. Let's get there in. we go. Confidence pool. Enter. All right. Oh, okay. it, well, the bra the bracket's only stuck right now is the regular bracket, but okay. don't okay, worry. Well, that, the confidence that was pool, you'll pick exactly your number, you'll see show it. You. But yeah, yeah, so yeah. when you pick UConn, you'll see the 16 points go, and, and then we have the submit button coming up today with Jose's face on it. 
I'm going to go from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. God damn, I keep forgetting all the fucking mistakes I did with that stupid submit button. Son of a bitch. So, quick review here. Jose is going to be joining us at the end of the show with Sharpie. Sharpie and Jose are joining us to cap the baseball game because the game is at 6.05 a.m. tomorrow morning. So, this is our best chance to hammer it. We have a huge NHL card. Then we'll go in right into the, the two playing games, the 16 seed, the 10 seed. Then we'll go into the NIT tournament. Then the CIT tournament. The CIT, you know, of course, gets announced so late. Uh, we don't have lines out yet, but th I'm sure they'll be out by the time we get there. Uh, then we'll go into NBA, and then we'll go into MLB. So that is our plan here for the show. And uh, I cannot believe Jose in, in, God, in 32 hours. 32 hours we'll be sitting at Southtown 101. Uh, yep. And I'll be offering anybody who wants me 100 bucks a game at NBA Jam. Oh, boy. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. Pete, are you going to offer a, a random contest for people to, at $100? Because Jimmy's ready to gamble. You know, Do you have a I, secret I, talent that we don't know about? I, the only thing I've thought about over the past uh, you know, couple days is the NCAA tournament lines, the NIT lines, the, sure. the, all the NIT totals getting bet up. I, 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 I can think about it. Tell me what you, you want me to have a contest. I'll have it. Have it yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe 100 bucks for a reach around. Maybe I was thinking. Sure, you. sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I can, I'm versatile. I can be reached around or I can reach. Oh, okay. perfect. Well, perfect. So you can I can be okay. reached or reach. Oh, that's, that's, I like that. I like that, Pete. It's, Versatility it's, is sure. the name of the game. It's all falling into place. Yeah, it's all falling. Or into we place. can, or we don't have to either. We can just talk. We can just talk. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> How can we talk when there's reach arounds available? A lot of people pay for reach arounds with me, but then they just wind up talking. They just want to be heard and seen. Yeah, they just want to talk NIT totals. Uh, Dan yeah, Kelly said he sent so a text message out to a bunch of guys in his phone today promoting the contest pools. Thank you so much, Dan. That means so much to us. All right, we got to get to work. Yo, Dan, Dan Kelly, wait, one quick second. Oh, yeah. Dan Kelly, I might go. I might be in Cortland uh, uh, April 19th. Tell me if you want to meet up, Dan Kelly. Fun event. I'll buy you a ticket if you want to go, Dan Kelly. I might be in Cortland April 19th. And look, uh, also, we have my guy Kent Davies who says he needs to reach – a reach down. Okay. That's a little different than a reach I can around. do it. I mean, yeah, that's a little bit a up down. below my pay grade, but I can yeah, try. A reach know? down. Uh, but Kent Davies, I get to hang out with him. You don't, Pete. I get to hang out with him Wednesday night. He's only there for one night. Wednesday night. He'll be at the bar, and I get to hang out with Kent Davies, who I've capped with for so long. Uh, I can't wait. Can't, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to be there at the bar on Wednesday night. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, we got to get to work. We have a ton of work to do, uh -huh. so let's shout out everybody in the chat and get right yeah. after it. Uh, the truth teller in the house. What up, my friend? Says today's a good day for getting that cash. Let's go. There's Viper NB here. Says wish I was coming to Pub Palooza, but next year for sure. Boston minus one and a half. Detroit minus one. Vancouver minus one. Also want to fire on Colorado minus one. Minnesota minus one. But waiting for the breakdown. I can't wait to break down this NHL card. I find it as interesting an NHL card as I've seen all year. Like, it's just, it's so much fun. I, uh, I love the, I, I don't know how I'm going to, you know, exactly how I'm going to, it's not one of those NHL cards where I'm like, look, I'm going to make all this money, but I just, I absolutely love it. True Teller says poker comedy and hanging with the boys sounds perfect. Yes. Sunday night, our comedy show, we have Slade ham, uh, one of Texas best comics. Uh, he performs all over the world. This guy's performing all over the world, nonstop, uh, usually around the world for the uh, American Marines. He's been in all of the, the most dangerous parts of the world uh, performing stand-up for uh, our army and, and our, our Marines, uh, but he's all over the world. And he's Houston native, a Scarface best friend. Uh, Slade Ham going to be rolling with us. I can't wait for that comedy show on Sunday night. I'm really, I just, I can't wait for this whole thing. Everything about this is just going to be magic. Uh, the Friday, we have the poker tournament in this beautiful Brooklyn Square uh, card parlor that's brand new. Then we have the JPZ LJ concert back at, at, at south town uh, it's just i mean it's just it's gonna be magic it's gonna be magic justin mckelvey stacks uh play of the day virginia under 120 and a half what a basketball game that is mm -hmm. i cannot wait to hear your thoughts on that pete that's so much fun colorado state virginia like i i don't know if you could come up with a better playing uh spot here uh so uh and Let's roll. So uh, Mr. Vape in the house got two EuroLeague plays. Uh, Real Madrid first quarter minus three and a half. And Real Madrid over 45 and a half team total first half for Mr. Vape. Uh, there's Chris uh, on, on a you know bad run, uh, you know, cashing two of his last 10 bets. You know, it ebbs and flows. It, it's just there's a streaky nature to this game, uh, Chris. And, you know, you just got to stick with the plan, bet size appropriately. Your bankroll needs to be coddled. 
and taken care of so that you can go through tougher times and, and find your way through it. Uh, there is the nuke worker in the house. His bags are packed. Leaving tomorrow for Palooza. Man, I, Duke, I can't wait to see you at the airport, man. I'm just I'm so pumped up, dude. I'm so pumped up. Uh, so old E in the house. We got Gerald Jones, Joey Harb, Armchair MMA, Wine Time Sports. Uh, you know where Wine Time uh, – Jose, do you mind pulling the uh, Pablo Palooza stuff just so I can see uh, Peter? You know where Wine Time Sports was yesterday? Two rows back at the Lakers game. Two for real rows back at the Lakers game. Uh oh, unbelievable. Man. Like just right there. Like you could reach out and, and, and touch him. Unbelievable. What a uh and what a game it was for him. And he had uh props on Bogdanovich and Rui Hachimura cashed them both mm. uh and got to sit there with his fiance two rows up. So oh. cool one time. Uh we're ready to rock. There's Troy Torrance in the house. Uh Jay Smooth, Smooth Balls play today is Cornell first half. Says mm -hmm. uh let's get it plus six. Uh, it does feel like a nice spot for Cornell where you can – where you wonder. Uh, you wonder if Ohio State is going to take this or how seriously Ohio State is going to take this. Let me get up to where that spot is. I thought it had it. And assuming, and assuming they do take it relatively uh, close to 100% seriously, does that mean that uh, Cornell's not still a good bet? Where the hell is that game? Why not? Okay, I'm going to find it here. So I thought I had it all – here, but I, I must have screwed that up. Let me just pop this here. Uh, okay, so uh, yes, I yeah, I mean, could still even if they do take it here, I feel you. Uh, so there we go. Yeah. Uh, Aquinas in the house, Maple Leafs and Hurricanes, a parlay. Uh, Mikey Money ready to go. Mikey Money lands on Thursday about 5 50 p.m. in San Antonio. Uh, Kent Davies, real deal prime, Nordy, nasty Nate. I can't wait to rock. With Nate, man. Uh, Dabra Kadabra, I can't wait, man. NJ Striker. There's Clint Starr, the Die Hard MMA podcast. Just my second bet of the 2024 uh, this weekend. Peyton Talbot. Best bet. Second best bet. That's it. Second best bet is Peyton Talbot. Uh, second best bet. That's important stuff here. Uh, also, I'm putting together my plan. I, I'm going to bet the... Um, uh, what the hell is it called? The the golf tournament. The It's not the Valero. It's the... What the hell is it called? Whatever the the Jesus, what an ass clown I look like. But I'm going to bet. I've, I've I've reached out to Dan Kelly and a few other people. I'm going to be moving on the golf tournament this weekend as well. I love that Peyton Talbot for us while we're in San Antonio. Mar Morgan Spooner ready to rock there. Stimmy OG uh, and uh, Stimmy OG says rip the Nerfy King Troy Hermo. Uh, Pete, do you want oh, to yes. say something about your friend? Who me? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, just, just, I mean, I, I, I'll, maybe I'll make a separate video talking about it for forty-five minutes. I mean, unbelievable. The guy Troy Hermo, you know, we all know what happened to him. Like literally, up till his last day, he was posting his uh, his prop sheet sheets and just talking about, you know, how great it is to be alive. And you know, so, uh, you know, I, you know, shout out to him. This show is dedicated to you, Troy Hermo, again. And just, uh, you know, I sent him a few messages. Uh, there's really nothing to say. Just we loved you, and uh, we still do. And we'll miss you. Yeah, I didn't know him until this last, till you started talking about him. And uh, what a, sure seemed like a spectacular guy and a big loss for not only the sports capping mark uh, group, but for the, for the world. So sorry to hear that. Uh, and sorry to the whole Hermo family. A very sad, what a guy he was. What a leader. Very inspiring. Uh, we have our guy, Serious Business who caps with us every day. Every time I say his name, I lock in a little bit. And it's his birthday today. He says he doesn't mm. need a birthday pick, beat. He doesn't need a birthday pick. What he needs is some words of wisdom from the great Loshan. Okay. Uh, a, don't bring sand to a beach. Okay. B, always try to appreciate the things that you know you're supposed to appreciate in existence, which is just being alive. And C, don't be a perfectionist about how you fall short. Of course, you know that you should be supremely happy just to be alive, but you know that in your day-to-day -day life, you're not even going to come anywhere close to that. So just do your best. Just do your best to do the things you know you should do. And also, don't bring sand to a beach. Well done. Happy birthday, serious business. Respect, man. I love capping with you. Joey Harp, Guillermo Zertucci almost got that 11 to 1 home on Friday for us. Every Friday, Guillermo giving us the Santa Anita play of the day. And Jose and I were watching it together, man. Uh, you know, uh, we had the lead all race long, all the way up to the final stretch. It was very exciting. Very exciting, G. And uh, love it. Love what you're doing there uh, for us all. And 
uh, Danko says, I need a link to the contest to post on X. Yes, we got to get that. We can get that for you. Uh, Jose can get that for you. Marcus McCarthy saying he's joining the contest. And uh, it's great to see all of you guys. Polo this, polo that. Brian Watson, winner's circle, Philly Eagle Flyer, uh, the truth teller. No, it's not the Singapore Classic today, uh, this weekend. It's it's not that. It's, I know it's not that. It's I can't believe I'm, I can't think of it right now. Res Mob says, shout out, shout to Troy Torrance. Looking to bet Florida on Friday. You gave me a reason. Another weekend sweep for Nuggets. First half free money. Mikey Money says, LA Kings play tonight. Then the LA Kings play tomorrow. You already know what to do. Mikey Money's been destroying, fading the Kings on the second half of back-to-backs. There's FM Brush, 2680. Mike Wilkerson, Jay Stone. A great, great, great group here you guys thank you uh and kong's clip says he will pay pete a hundred dollars to reach around himself so a lot of opportunities for you pete. <laughs> okay <laughs> sure you know whatever you got oh, the you is fine thank you the valspar the valspar i am thinking of doing just like a i don't know i'm gonna pitch it to both uh dan and, and gogster and thinking of just taking the three canadians you know taylor hadwin and hughes and just you know they're all long shots and just i don't know Maybe not. Maybe that's not taking it seriously. Uh, but yes, Valspar open this weekend. I want to hammer. Okay, let's get to work, Pete. This is a fascinating, fascinating yeah. NHL card. And I've made three bets. There are okay. two more that I will be making, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the public to keep hammering the favorite. And there are two more that I'm extremely interested in. Uh, let's get to work. Okay, well, the way we start. Yeah, we'll start. We'll start with Ottawa, Boston. Obviously, Boston is a uh, is a big favorite. Ottawa blew out. Uh, you know, the team they no, they lost their last game uh, seven to two. They won three in a row before that. All of them in OT, not very impressively. And Boston, you know, they've won four out of five. Uh, we've talked about how maybe they're not the kind of team that that that, that should be. Uh, as they're not. They don't inspire confidence as this level of a favorite. But they are still a great team. They're very well rested here, and so I was thinking, uh, you know, maybe in most spots we'd not want to take Boston as a big favorite, but in this spot, maybe think about it. And uh, you know, a couple of uh, depending on whether you think there's going to be a high or low scoring game, some some props that I was thinking about: Brad Marchand assist seems good, Pavel Zaka a point maybe, and Pasternak a point maybe, and maybe more Morgan Geeky goal at a, at a big dog line. But in general, thinking that uh, Boston. Maybe a good bet here before I want to hear what you have to say about it. Maybe Boston, even as this big of a favorite, worth a shot. Uh, also, very well uh, rested Rock, team. Rocco Roger, Roger saying, waiting to bet the Blues, Jimmy. No, I already bet the Blues. In uh, that, I could be wrong. The public could come in on the avalanche at this line. I'd be shocked if that happens. It had already moved six cents at Pinnacle. It's already moved the cent back to the avalanche. I could be wrong. But I already bet the Blues. I'd be shocked if people think that the avalanche at this number after beating the Oilers in overtime and having an extra day off just sitting there it is a nice spot for them against a divisional rival. I, 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 you know, I'd be shocked if, if that's what the gambling public thought. Uh, Ron Crawford, NHL spreadsheet play today is on the Leafs. Uh, let's get to this Bruins spot and great setup uh, for us, Pete. Let me just copy and paste our guy, Ron Crawford's. Oh, sorry, here. Uh, yeah, I, I got, you know, uh, Rocco saying, uh, I think they'll close a plus 185, plus 190. They were plus 192. I moved on them at plus 186. So we'll see where it bangs out. But uh, this is a fascinating hockey game. The Ottawa Senators right now, look, you know, Corpus Allo's listed. I don't know if he'll be in 15-24, 3.31 goals against average, 890 save percentage. Uh, Ottawa power play at 16.7%, penalty killing 73.5%. Horrible special teams. This is not the team you want to play when your special teams are horrible. Now, I was on Boston against Philly. Uh, I got in on them live as well, down 2-1 at plus 155. So the fact that I didn't cash the puck line, uh, I was on the minus one against Philadelphia. Uh, it still worked out okay because I, I got that live bet in on them. Uh, your mark listed for the Bruins. Their goaltending, whether it be Swayman or your mark, is not nearly as strong as it's been last year. Maybe it's because Patrice Bergeron and Krejci aren't there being defensively accountable and winning all the faceoffs, but still 23.4% power play, 82.1% penalty killing. Uh, this line opened up, well, right now it's at minus 223. It opened up minus 220. So we've only at Pinnacle. So only three cents of movement, a very little movement on the side. On the total, I thought I had this up. Yes, on the total here, it's sitting at over here, it's sitting at six, juice to the over. Uh, you know, opened up minus 113 to the over, now minus 115 to the over, two cents to the over. Senators coming off a 7-2 loss at home to the Hurricanes on Sunday night. That snapped their three-game winning streak. We were all over the Hurricanes in that spot. 
The Senators are now missing four centers. Four. And, you know, I know we're talking about a team that doesn't have Bergeron and Krejci. This is still a team that's so good up the middle. So good. You know, whether it's Zaka or Coyle or Geeky, uh, you, you just you, – the, now this Senators team doesn't have Rourke Chartier, Matthew Highmore, Zach McEwen, and Josh Norris. So they have Shane Pinto on the first line with Batherson and Kachuk. How often are they going to have the puck against the Bruins? You have Stutzla and Drew and Ridley Gregg. You've moved Greg, Greg to the to the wing to, to try to have a top six forward group with Norris out. Then you have Zach Ostapchuk as a third line center. Mark Kostelik is a fourth line center. Are you going to fear putting them on the ice against this Bruins team that comes in off their fourth win in five games? They completely dropped the ball. They were up, what, five to two in the third period against the Flyers and you know they won six to five I think that will keep them sharp here in this spot and I took the Bruins on the minus one and a half line at plus 115 it was it was plus 113 over at a pinnacle plus 115 at bet 365 and if the you know the Bruins when they gain momentum it's like a tidal wave that arena goes crazy and teams need to call a time they can't handle it like even the flyers buckled like it does you know but they're missing three defensemen i do not see a world where the senators are going to be able to fight off this aggressive bruins team that is i just think they're going to beat them comfortably and, and easily and i'm on the boston bruins minus one and a half feet of plus 115 all right i'm gonna jimmy i'm just gonna like uh uh mention my um what I want to make official and then I'll get the lines and I'll, I'll, I'll tell them what you are and I'll email them to you. Cause I want to do a bunch of, um, you know, player props as well. All right. So I will take Boston minus one. I'll use the pinnacle line. I'll calculate it. I'm also going to take Morgan geeky goal plus 346 current line at, uh, at pinnacle plus 346. That's a pretty healthy line there. And I think I'm going to add on um, uh, March end and Zaka for, for assists, maybe Zaka for a point, but um, would you rather have Zaka point? Or assist point would be like minus one thirty nine assist plus one thirty two assist yeah right right I will take Marchan and Zaka for an assist on both and I will uh, quote you the lines in a second beautiful uh, beautiful uh, let's roll on so a lot of action there for Pete and he'll go over them again once we're done any time I'm on the Bruins minus one and a half a plus one fifteen let's roll on Pete to Blue Jackets Red Wings. Okay, this one is, um, yeah, this one is, is a little bit tough. Detroit, of course, lost at Pitt in their last game, lost eight of nine, and now they're a huge favorite at home against Columbus, and Columbus mostly losing, although they have been getting a lot of shots on goal. They're off of a pretty big, uh, you know, pretty big 6-1 loss, and just uh, not exactly sure. You know, you you are very, uh, a lot of our, uh, you know, analysts in the comments section are, are, are very astute to figure out when, when a team is, um is about to turn a corner in terms of their their performance but uh, so i don't know if that's the case with detroit but they certainly have been shitting the bed over the past 10 games or so and columbus you know pretty crappy but they get a win here and there uh, i was all over them against san jose two games ago and then i forgot to fade them against winnipeg but uh, columbus can get can get you a win here and there so should detroit be this big of a favorite that's the big question you can answer that jim i know you can I can. The issue with the Blue Jackets, uh, and I've said often a team that I just don't want to fade, I only want to back, is their injuries are mm -hmm. absolutely horrific. They just they, they don't have the depth to handle these injuries. And because of that, they can't be backed, unfortunately. And, and such a big piece to this Blue Jacket puzzle for me is Chinnikov on the second line. He's got the upper body injury. You're also missing Corrali, so you're, there's your third line centerman. You don't have Justin Danforth or Kent Johnson. You lost Fantilli earlier. He's going to be back at the end of the month. And Patrick Line, I mean, who really cares about him, but he's not there. Uh, Boakvist is not there either. And now you just have a decimated Blue Jackets team with a 14% power play, 77.3% penalty killing. Uh, Merzlikens being below average. Alex Lyon is back to being the AHL goaltender that we remember. Uh, they don't want to put in Reimer because we, you know, we know what you get with Reimer. Uh, the the Red Wings are in a tough spot, and they won't be as soon as Dylan Larkin comes back. I mean, that's how much he means to this hockey team. Uh, you know, Lalonde said that they don't expect him back tonight. He's trying to play. Uh, he's going to play this week. You know, he had the day off yesterday so that he might be able to play tonight. Uh, this is a huge game, huge game for Detroit. Uh, so they play 
they're at home against the Jackets on Tuesday, Thursday. They have the Islanders, and then they have a five game road trip uh, where he's just so necessary. They've lost eight of nine games, but the Blue Jackets have lost four or five. This is their third game in four nights. A decimated Blue Jacket roster, and I don't know, you know, how to back them now. Rocco Rogers liking Alex Nylander. Uh, Willie's yeah. brother, who's playing so well, I get that. I've been uh, hitting. He, I've been hitting his shots on goal props over, like game in and game out. Oh yeah, I mean it's. Uh, but maybe this isn't the spot to do that. You tell me. Road game well, against a pissed off team. The Red Wings are just playing horrible hockey and need to play as accountable as possible. I, I'm not a shot prop guy, so I, I wouldn't be the right person to answer this total though. You know, at six and a half, juice to the over has had the seven cent move at Pinnacle since it opened at eight twenty in the morning. So it means there's going to be offense, or the market expects offense, of course. And then from a money line standpoint, the Jackets sitting at plus one forty four. They opened up at plus one fifty two. When I first saw the line, I was like, "How could the Jackets be this big of a dog?" And then I was like, "Oh, okay, I, I get it." And mm-hmm. I, I know the public lost their shirt with the Red Wing Sabers game, uh, and then. You know, the Sabres bounced back beautifully, and I lost my share. I lost uh, with the Kraken last night. But the, the Red Wings at home can play a tight, conservative hockey game and beat a legitimate competition. I don't want anything to do with this game when it comes down to it, Pete. Okay. Well, I will add on uh, the Nylander uh, props, uh, uh, shot, shot, uh, over two and a half prop shot. I'm cute getting confused because I'm looking at these freaking lines. Pinnacle has minus 156. Caesars has 127. So that shows you how different these lines can be uh, at at any given time. So I'll take the Caesars line, of course. Uh, Nylander over two and a half minus one twenty seven. And big Um, news: Reimer Reimer confirmed for the wing. Says Slatsy. You know, I wish, you know, I wish I had of, I wish they had have done this earlier. Really, Um, I I don't know how they keep going with Lyon. He looks awful out there. But Reimer is confirmed for the wings. Okay, and then uh, let me see. Uh, hold on one second. Oh, sorry, I'm just looking at everything here. And then I think I'm also going to add on uh, uh, Shane Gottesbeher, over one and a half shots at minus 158. That is the current line at, uh, at, uh, at Pinnacle. And um, I think that's, uh, that's it for now. I was Lucas Raymond has been playing really well. A goal for him is pro- – I mean, Detroit's probably going to be able to put up some points against Columbus, right? He just got in a fight in practice. When you get in a fight in practice, you generally step up in your game. You you and feel that's, like you need, that's going to continue. You think here for a fifth straight game? Uh, I just I just it means that he's angry and the angry kid who's trying his hardest. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'll think about that for a second, but I'll let you know. But for sure, I'll add on uh, Gottes Bier over one and a half, and uh, and uh, Nylander over two and a half. And maybe I'll add on uh, an assist or a point as well for Goddess Beer. Let's roll on, my man. Next up, we have Penguins Devils. Okay. Uh, you know, I've been doing okay in the NHL in some ways, doing bad in other ways. One of the ways I've been uh, doing badly in the NHL is, uh, you know, betting on New Jersey to not be as shitty as they have been. What is up with them? Shouldn't they be way, way better than this? You should. T- you can tell me, Jimmy, the bag. They've lost seven of nine. They still all got these guys, Meyer, Hishie, everyone, Jack Hughes. And Pittsburgh, you know, I, I we had them. I had them uh, plugged as a, as, a, as, a, as a team that wasn't that good. Not that good offensively. They've won two and two out of three, but in general, they just seem like a not good team right now. You know, they beat San Jose, they beat Detroit. So, all things considered, I would think that this might be a great spot for New Jersey, unless, unless they're just a team that just doesn't have their head on right at this moment, and you don't want to be betting them in any situation, especially not as a, as a favorite. What do you think? Uh, I immediately, you know, I want to fade the Penguins so badly, so I immediately wanted to back the devils and and I'm, I'm going to lose money on there. You know, I got them to make the playoffs of minus minus one thirty. They're 14 to one now uh, in, in the problem and levels play today in here from tone Miggins. It is Wagner first half money line at plus plus one forty. a shout out to our guy tone Miggins. Uh, so, uh, Oh, truth teller says someone offered him 1300 for his van. Nice job. Truth teller. Uh, that sounds uh, promising. Uh, let's get this levels. Play of the day here. I just want to quickly make sure that we got it copied and pasted for when we talk. So we got stacks play of the day on the second one. Uh, levels play of the day on the first one is perfect. Perfect setup for us to break down. Uh, but here, I immediately wanted to back the New Jersey Devils. You know, mm-hmm. uh, but I started thinking about the situation. 
here. Uh, in in th- it's possible that Jake Allen has a resurgence, a short lived resurgence with the Devils, and Yari's been horrific. Uh, Pittsburgh power play fourteen point nine percent, eighty one point six penalty killing. New Jersey twenty one point six, seventy nine point seven percent penalty killing. But let's start with the Penguins. They're coming off their second win in three games, six three at home over the Red Wings on Sunday night. They're as healthy as they've been for a long time. Uh, that doesn't mean that I don't want to fade them any less. I really, really want to fade them as much as possible. This total's at six and a half, uh, minus one hundred eight to the under. I did think about the over for a little bit, uh, and then the money line here, New Jersey, all the way down to minus one. 17 i guess not all the way they opened up at minus 124 but here's the thing that isn't a numbers spot and justin mckelvey is on the over six and a half uh so is rocco rogers so the devil's coming off their fourth loss in five games okay so psychologically you know and this is a fun part of the capping for me is you had all these expectations you were tied with the oilers as the stanley well the the Maple Leafs were at plus 800, and the Oilers and the Devils were at plus 900. They were the second choice, tied for the second choice to win the Stanley Cup. So you've had this horribly disappointing year. Your coach is being fired. Then you have this four-game road trip that's also bad. You go one and three. You had the surprise win against Dallas. Go one and three. So you finish off the road trip on Sunday night in Las Vegas. A disappointing road trip. Do you not go out and party on Sunday night in Vegas? It's been a horrible year. You have a horrible trip. You have all this weight on your shoulders. You know, I think you go out and party, man. I, I think you go out, you know, you gamble, you drink, you go, you do whatever it is you do. Uh, so then they have one day off and they come back here. It's just a situation where I cannot back them. Uh, and I wish that I could. And my plan was to back the Devils. But then I started thinking about that night in Vegas. And then the plane ride home and then having to turn it on here. I don't want them. And I, I don't ever want the penguins. So I'm off of this game. Hmm. But they've just been so bad though. They, well, I mean, that was a really impressive. De- win I'm saying the, the devils Dallas have been Stars. so bad. The yeah. devils have been so bad. And you got to think that, that, that they've got it in them. Or maybe they don't, they've got it in them to be like, all right, we're not this bad. Let's fucking get a win right now. No, I don't know. I think, you know, I've been on losing teams. You know, they, are they, they're 14 to 1 to make the playoffs. They're in Vegas for a night. They have one day off between games. I don't want them. Uh, but that mm-hmm. win against Dallas showed you that they can put it together. If the Penguins beat the Devils here, I'll be all over them next game. But I, I don't I don't want them. I just I fear I fear their headspace. I don't want them. And you know, uh, Travis Green is a curmudgeon. He's so sad. He sits there mm-hmm. pouting all mm-hmm. day and night. So after this bad mm. road trip, you get on the plane with this pouting coach who doesn't speak to you. I mean, it just sucks. Tom Fitzgerald's an ass okay. clown. He deserves all of the fault for this hockey team. Uh, you, he's done a shit job. He should have been fired. And Lindy Ruff should still have his job. Okay. I was going to think about like Timo Meyer goal or, or, or Mike Bunting over two and a half shots. What about the under then, Jim? Just six and a half? Well, that what, no. what got me off of what got me off of the over, you know, was the the Devils and how they've been sort of trending at home, and and this is a divisional game. I, do these points matter? Uh, I I don't. Um, I got off of the over, so which means maybe the unders lie. But we have our cappers here in the chat who are on the over. So, all right, I will. Uh, I'll take a. I'll take a shot with the under six and a half minus 108 current line at, at Pinnacle. And again, I'll review all my uh, all my official lines and everything uh, at the end of the show. But I'll take the under here six and a half minus 108 current line Pinnacle. OK, sounds good. There is Matty Ice in the chat. Last year's champion of our bracket contest right here <laughs> in the flesh. Matty Ice, we need you. We need you to defend your championship and go for two straight. That's uh, important, important, important. Uh, take it away. Uh, Pistol Pete, next game on the board, a great one, Jets-Rangers. Yeah, Winnipeg Rangers, of course. Uh, Winnipeg, both these teams great, right? Winnipeg off two dominant wins, has huge faves. They lost a few before that. Before that, of course, just winning, winning, winning. Rangers, a tough uh, schedule that they've recently played. They've won five of six. Both these teams really good. 
I was thinking about maybe a first period under, but also I think maybe because of the spot, the Rangers coming off a tough gauntlet of games and Winnipeg, they've been dominating, you know, shitty teams, but they haven't really been that good against uh, the, the upper level teams. So I was thinking maybe a sneaky play with Winnipeg here, if not full game, then at least first period. So I was thinking first period under because it's such an intense game, both such good teams. I was thinking about Winnipeg first period, uh, maybe a little bit of a letdown spot for the Rangers and Winnipeg to be uh, a little bit more, 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 more motivated than normal to, uh, to play well against a good team. So that's how I was thinking. I was thinking first period under Winnipeg, maybe full game more so first period. And then uh, a couple of props. I've been hitting Trocheck over uh, shots on goal props. And those have been mostly cashing thinking about that again here and Ross Lovic as well. But uh, thinking about Winnipeg, Jim early or full game. I, th- I thought about Winnipeg heavily. I thought about Winnipeg heavily, and when this line came up, it was all Rangers tickets. Now the Jets tickets have come in. I thought about Winnipeg heavily. Why I couldn't bet them is hmm. because they've won their last two games by a combined score of 12-1 to 1 over the Ducks and Blue Jackets. I wish they were playing coming in against tougher competition. The Rangers are now down two defensemen. Both Lindgren and Truba are out of the lineup. They do have depth on defense. You mentioned Roslovic. I love the pickup of Roslovic. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love Trocek playing with Panarin because Trocek, a guy who wins faceoffs, a penalty killer who can play defensively accountable. I like this Rangers team a lot, and I like this Jets team a lot. I just I can't, and I think the Jets are so dangerous here on the road. I can't back them after them beating up on two minutes. I can't back them. I think this Jim. line is is very telling. We talked about it on Friday in the Norfolk State Howard line. Norfolk State had beaten Howard by fifteen twice in a row, uh, and then they they opened up as a pick 'em, and all the money ninety seven percent of cash came on Norfolk State, and they moved the line minus two, minus three, minus four, so that everybody who bet Norfolk State felt good about it, and more people came on. The you know the jokes the the the. the the books pulled a fast one and you know, I was trying to get everybody to be aware of it. And then Howard went outright. This line is set up where of course people are going to think the Rangers have value. They're 24, eight, no at home. Now, yes, the jets are a very good road team, 20, 10 and three, but I just can't, I just don't want to back a team after they beat up on weak competition. I just don't think that sets you up right for a marquee hockey game. I think you're right. Leaning towards the under, I think it's going to be a very tight hockey game, but I, I ended up having – I thought when I started capping this card, and I spent hours and hours on it, I thought that I'd have all this action. And when I wrote down my initial plan, just like gut, Jets were on my card. But I pulled off. I'm not going to bet them. The only reason I like the Jets here is because they're aware that they haven't done well against these teams. So it's not going to be a letdown. In fact, it's going to be the opposite. It's like, well, we, we beat all these shitty teams. Let's see if we can do it against a good team. Yeah. Look, I get that. I, I get that ideology i just it's just not something that i succeed with right Uh, you know and we talked about like i know this is a different but even remember last week the avalanche had won two straight games by huge scores at home and then they finished off their home trip with the Miami with the minnesota wild and i was like look i get why anybody would want to back the avalanche after they're destroying their opposition but it just doesn't work like that it's just not that easy now this is different because against a much tougher opponent but they played minnesota they were lucky to win 2-1 in overtime after you know winning each game by five or six, well, it's just not a spot where I want them. I, I just don't want a team in this situation. That's all. I, but I understand your thought process. I just it's not for me. All right, I'll just stick for now just with one prop. Uh, Roslovic over uh, one and a half shots minus one fifty two current line at uh, Pinnacle. I'll go with that, and um, I'll just I'll just stick with that for now. All right, let's roll on, Peter, because we have such an interesting game yeah. in Leafs Flyers. Yeah, Leafs Flyers. Um, of course, uh, you know, Toronto lost to Carolina in a shootout last game. Big game for them. Big loss for them. Philly lost a close one at Boston in general, losing more than they're winning right now. Two games ago, Toronto blasted Toronto blasted Philly, right? 6-2. So maybe there's a revenge spot here. But the whole question is just, what is the state of Philly? How good of a team are they or are they not? How much does the coach uh, matter, help them or hurt them? How... Uh, motivated here is is Toronto going to be to 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 bounce back off the tough loss versus Philly motivated to 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 uh, to get revenge off of the blowout loss a couple of games ago, and uh, there are definitely some uh, some some props that I'm liking considering the likely motivations here. But as far as Philly being a small home dog, total of six and a half. 
I guess my first thought would be Philly as a home dog, at least first period, but I don't know about that. What do you like here, Jim? Well, the Flyers cannot be back missing three defensemen, three of their, and the mm -hmm. four with Walker. They just can't, they simply cannot be back. Uh, the problem is, is I capped myself off of the Leafs. Uh, so I wish I've been fading the Flyers as much as possible. I was all over them against the Leafs when they played the Leafs the first round. And Ron Crawford's spreadsheet play today is on the Leafs. And, and mm. you know, I, I, I get it. I get it from a talent wise here. I mean, Sandheim and York are your top pair. They have to play so much because Mark Stahl is, I mean, it's like having another Tyler Myers out there. Ronnie Atard, uh, Igor Zamula, and Eric Johnson. I mean, they, I, I just, I truly believe there's no way. Now, with the Red Wings playing so bad, uh, you know, but Buffalo coming, I, I still believe there's no way the Flyers make the playoffs. They just can't with this defense. But, you know, we'll see how it bangs out. Urson is playing okay. And, and under the circumstances of Carter Hart leaving, uh, and the, under the, how he left, I mean, he's been, Urson's been great, but statistically, he's just been okay. The Leafs coming off that 5 4 shootout loss at home to the Hurricanes on Saturday night. Laugh out loud, funny. Uh, you know, I got in at plus 175 when they were down 1 0, and I didn't take the Hurricanes again. I didn't think I was going to cash it, uh, honestly, uh, when they were down 4 2. And of course, everything just also the Leafs have the power play in overtime. Like, uh, to watch the Leafs lose was laugh out loud funny. The Flyers coming off their second straight loss in third and four games, 6 5 with the Bruins on Saturday night. This is a young Flyers team that has a lot of character. They fight hard, they try hard, they, they play, you know, hard. But when I combined the state of injuries for these Leafs, and it's you know, you have Mitch Marner, who's not skating with the high ankle sprain. You have Labushkin, who's sick. Uh, he's not going to play tonight. He's sick, and he, you know, brings toughness. Callie Yarncroft is going to be out now for an extended period of time until the end of the regular season. Giordano's been out with a concussion. You know, if you look at the lineup for the Leafs and, and what, you know, what they've decided to do, they're trying to keep Bertuzzi up to that first line. They're giving Domi more and more opportunity, you know, to be a top six forward. But it's a, uh, it's Pont Pontus Holmberg is now on the first line with Matthews and Bertuzzi. And then you have Nylander, Domi, and McMahon. Uh, Tavares is on the third line with Nick Robertson, who's looked better at times, and Matthew Nice. They're, you know, they're still a good enough hockey team. But I, I was certain I was going to be on the Leafs. But that 6-2 game against a team with character, a team I don't want anything to do with, a team that I've got money on to not make the playoffs, I, I just I can't take the Leafs in this spot uh, as this type of favorite. Let me just touch on the line history. And I know you're hearing me not bet a bunch of things, but I do have action other than the Bruins puck line. It's all coming. But, yeah, I just – I like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't not believe the Flyers aren't going to take this extremely seriously and the Leafs just beat them badly in this barn, and I just – uh, there's been a two point move or two cent move to the Leafs minus 127 to minus 129. And then from a total side of things here, we have it sitting. Oh, shoot, I got that money line up. I'll pull up the total. Sorry, right here. From a total side of things, we're sitting here at a six and a six and a half minus 116 to the under. Open up minus uh, 119 to the under. So it'd be a, a tiny move to the over. Yeah, I just can't do it. It's, it's, I can't, I can't do it. I just, I don't feel good about it. I I can't do it. Can't bet him. All right. Well, I have a few props I'm liking, Jim. First of all, I'm also going to add on, I forgot, Dmitry Voronkov over one and a half shots on goal for Columbus, minus 187. That's pinnacle. And also the Roslovich one and a half is minus 146 at Caesars. So uh, I'll make that my, um, my, my official play there. And then, uh, yeah, for this one, um, I really like this guy Tyson Forster shots on goal over two and a half at a big dog line at like plus 150. Not exactly sure why. I mean, if Philly doesn't win – they're still going to give a good effort. So so I like that one. I think Owen Tippett point at like minus 120 or so might be good. And Austin Matthews not to score a goal like my, minus 110 or so is something that um, I was thinking about. And let me ask you this, Jimmy the Bag. This guy McMahon for, uh, for, for Toronto, you know that guy, right? Yeah, two point seven million extension. He's uh, right. He's making Robertson look bad. He's playing great. Shorthanded now. He's out there in the penalty kill. He's playing great. Right. So I've been hitting his shot props and mostly winning with them. He got shut out by Philly in that game two games ago. Now, when you see that, do you think that that's because Philly knows how to match up against him and shut him down? Or you think it was fluky and he's going to come back here and be a little bit annoyed and, and, and be a good bet once again for his shot prop over? Well, I know that they've played because these are a young Philly team. So they all played against each other in the A and in minors. 
and they all know about the contract that McMahon just signed. So they're so, pissed about that and what trying to trying to hold him down, huh? Oh yeah. Okay. That, but I mean, I'm not Thank saying that's you know that you shouldn't expect him to bounce right. back. By the way, Brian Watson says the Leafs didn't lose; they tied. He doesn't count overtime or shootout as anything. That's cute, Brian. Really cute. We'll start off with Tyson Forster over two and a half uh, shots on goal, plus 148. That's the current line at, at Pinnacle. And I'm going to throw on another few, uh, Jimmy the Bag. Uh, definitely uh, Kokchechny assist at like plus 155. Statistically, that looks good. And maybe Owen Tippett just to get a point. Is that too obvious? I mean, he's a he's a beast, right? Mostly. They have, really good young, they have really strong young talent. I Because I'm so against the Flyers all year. I've been watching them a ton. They're young talents. Solid. They, they they play with character. They fight hard. You know they, you know I I you know it's funny. I've been fading the Bruins a lot and the Flyers a lot and 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 I've learned to respect them mm -hmm. as with character teams. You know, but yeah. No, All right. Like well, in the meantime, that yeah. I I was gonna give Tippett at minus one nineteen. Now it's up to one thirty one. But but I will I will do that uh, anyway. So I got three here. Um, and I'll search, you know, line chop a little, see if I can get better. But Forster over two and a half shots on goal, plus 148. Kochekny assist, plus 155, however the fuck you pronounce that. And Owen Tippett to get a point, minus 131. Those are all lines of pinnacle, but I'll shop around, see if I can get uh, a little bit better. And the McMahon over two and a half at plus 129 is very interesting. Again, he got shut out by Philly. Other than that, he's been doing very well with his shot props. I've been doing well, and also leaning uh, Austin Matthews not to score a goal at uh, at minus one hundred eight. But but that's it for me, Jim. Yeah, I uh, I like it. I like it. Let's roll on because uh, uh, we got a ton of, and I've got action coming yeah. up here. And the next game is another fun, fun game to cap: Hurricanes Islanders. All right. Carolina, of course, blasted Ottawa in their last game. They're generally awesome and winning. Here and there they lose, but most of the time winning. Isles now have, have four straight losses. And uh, damn, Jimmy, the bag on uh, – when was it? On uh, on Friday night, I think it was. I I, I was at a party, and I, and I took people aside, and I was like, listen, Isles, Isles tomorrow. They shut out two games in a row. Just trust me. Just trust me. Of course, they fucking lost in overtime. Unbelievable. I did have them first period, so that one cashed. No one tailed me, so that's good. But uh, so I broke even because I had them first period and full game. They won the first period, lost the full game. But I, the Isles are like New Jersey. There's kind of something wrong with them, or maybe not. Four straight losses, though. I was thinking this is a, a, maybe an under game because it's a huge game for both of these teams, right? For playoff implications. Uh, so I was thinking maybe a first period under, maybe Horvat over shots. I mean, it's a big game for both of these guys. Leaning under. And uh, I guess on the side, I guess before I hear what you have to say, free play, I throw it on the aisles as a dog. But what's up with them? They've been losing. I came close. I came close to bending the Islanders, and it's still not a line through it. Uh, you know, I'm waiting to see how much how much action comes on the Hurricanes. And that's not to say I don't think the Hurricanes are spectacular. They are so good. When you watch them beat the Leafs, they played so badly. I mean, that's that's when you know how good a hockey team is. Uh, you know, and Brenda Moore is such a great coach. They're going to be so tough to beat in the playoffs. I, I you know, I don't, I, nobody will want to play this hockey team, and I expect them to make it to the Eastern Conference final. Uh, this total is sitting at six minus 113 to the under. If I could truly, truly count on the goaltending from the Islanders, you know, with Sorokin, if he was Sorokin of yesteryear, maybe, you know, maybe the under is the play, even though this, Hurricane offense looks so good with Gensel. Uh, I mean, even Kuznetsov looks a little slow, but his uh, analytics since he's come over to the Canes have been very good. 26.1% uh, power play for Carolina, and the Islanders' penalty killing has been bad all year. 71.8% with Pulak and Pelik. I don't understand why it's been so bad. The Carolina special team is phenomenal. 85.8% penalty kill. The Islanders' power plays come back to earth a little bit. Dobson's still a monster on it. Her, both teams are on their third game in four nights. So both squads are exhausted. And I would like to back the Islanders here. I would. I just, I, I've got a bias. I've watched the full games of the Hurricanes the last two, two games. And they just look, they played so bad against the Leafs in one. They, that third period against Ottawa was just, I mean, that's what, God, it looked like the Russian Red Army out there against <laughs> the Senators. They looked so good, so in control. 
So it's it's Islanders or nothing. It's the under six or nothing. And and I don't know if I want to get involved. I, I really don't. I um I don't know. Uh, North Ender says, love the public, loves the European Canes team. Can't wait to fade them in the playoffs. Uh, well, we'll be going up against each other, North Ender. They, they are such a good hockey team. Now, they, their goaltending is a bit questionable, but Kochekov looking a little better. Uh, but I just I, – I, I can't move on it. I, I don't think I can move on it. Why don't you like the first period under? Uh, North Ender says, pretty telling when your coach is the toughest guy on your team. Look, I think the Hurricanes – are a much tougher team than the Avalanche. Well, you take Josh Manson off the Avalanche, this is a team that's going to get their ass kicked. They're going to get beaten up all over the ice. You know, uh, and look, uh, Broad Brindamore is the toughest guy in the Hurricanes. Rick Tockett's the toughest guy in the Canucks. I don't hear anybody talking shit about the Canucks. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of soft ass hockey teams in the NHL right now, and the Avalanche are as soft as you get, but Josh Manson stuff. But he's going to have to fight the toughest guys in the league. I mean, I don't know why. Joe Sackick just doesn't serve. And now you don't have Gabe Landeskog. That was different when Gabe was out there all the time. But um, uh, North Ender says he is talking shit about the Knucks. Okay, good. North Ender, respect, respect. Uh, sorry, what was your question, man? Why don't you like first period under in this one? It's a big game for both teams because they're tired and you think they the defense won't be there. I, just, I, I think that when both teams are playing their third game in four nights, I think the volatility mm -hmm. creeps up. Sure. So yeah, uh, yeah, I think the first period under is makes a ton of sense. But I can't, I can't trust Sorokin the way I could last year. So I just, I just with the huge card. If this wasn't such a huge card, maybe I'd pull the trigger on it. Okay. Well, I will add on uh, just one play. Bo Horvat over two and a half shots on goal minus one hundred seven current line pinnacle and a few other places. I'll do that. And give the cartel saying the Islanders penalty kill sucks. This Carolina Hurricane power play now with Gensel on it and Kuzi on the second line. I mean, good God. Burns has played 1,400 games. He still looks spectacular. Great job, Doug Wilson. An asshole. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's roll. Let's roll on because I love these next games. All right, next one. Here we go. Colorado-St. Louis uh, is the next game, right? That's recovering in the in the order. Yeah, Colorado-St. Louis. Uh, you know, Colorado, of course, won six in a row. Last two in OT as a small dog. Uh, you have had a great read on Colorado uh, recently, Jimmy the Bag. St. Louis, though, won four in a row. Before that, they hadn't been getting results. Now you got St. Louis as a huge home dog. And my note on this one was, hmm, at the line, maybe St. Louis, worth a shot. No real opinion on total, but... Once again, leaning McKinnon over points and assist props as well. And uh, maybe Jake Neighbors to get a point at plus money. But, yeah, it does feel like uh, Lions maybe a little bit too big. Great to see you, Kelsey. Thank you for joining us. I'm on the Blues. Mm -hmm. And you guys could be right. Uh, the public could come in on the Avalanche. The line could go up. It's not, though. It's gone. This line has gone from – plus 192 at 820 in the morning down to plus 186. The first time it got to plus 186 was 910 in the morning. Uh, you know, then it got to plus 189. Now it's back at 186 again. Honestly, and I could be wrong. Uh, yes, the Blues have won four straight games, uh, Swiggy. 4-2 uh, at home over the Ducks was their fourth. This is a final game of four-game homestand. Uh, I think the Blues are just too sharp of a pick for the line to move towards the Avalanche. I really do. I think this has got... Um, Jake Burns says, y'all at Southtown 101. Uh, I get in tomorrow. Most of the squad gets in tomorrow, Jake. Uh, so you'll see uh, when I'm in studio, but uh, coming up soon. And you'll also see a big bottle of Hennessy on the table uh, as well. So you'll, that'll be the sign that uh, I'm in. Uh, so both teams come in as healthy as they have been in a long time. And they're making their drive towards the postseason. The Avalanche coming off their sixth straight win, 3-2 in overtime at Edmonton on Saturday night. It's one of the most fun games I've ever had. I was you know, alone watching these games downstairs uh, and, you know, popped edible. And I, I knew the public, you know, was all over the over in the Colorado Edmonton game. And, and I know what happens to the public. They lose their shirts. So I was like expecting a low scoring game. And I was like, so what number do I want it at? And I was like, I can't, I wanted at four and a half, you know, and with, I waited till it got to four and a half with a minute and a half left in the first. And it was minus minus one eighty. And I was like, Oh, can I make it to the first intermission? And I did at minus 145, and then I bet it hard at minus 145. And then they scored, they missed the penalty shot. They got the one goal, and then there was no scoring for it. And then it went down to three and a half, and I hammered it again. And then watching all the goals come in in the uh, third period was magic. And uh, it was just 
magic. That hockey game was phenomenal. Those two teams are spectacular. I can't wait. They play each other twice more in the regular season. That was the first time they met all year. Uh, you know, and Nate McKinnon not giving up on, on the play with a second and a half left in overtime just shows the kind of hockey player he is. Uh, he's phenomenal. Uh, they win 3-2 in overtime. And then they have two days off and have to get ready for the Blues here. And for the Blues, this is their litmus test. This game means everything to the Blues. They've won four straight. They're challenging themselves. Are you watching Binner out there? Binnington is so good. Uh, you know, you guys know how many overtimes and shootouts I lost in February. I knew I was going to start cashing them all. And maybe all is out of it. But I knew, Scott, I knew Binner was going to shut the door on the wild and I was going to catch that shootout. I knew the Hurricanes were going to catch that shootout because I'm, it's going to come back, you know, to the mean. It's going to revert to the mean. And I'm going to start cashing these. This is a great spot for the Blues. Final mm. game of four-game homestand. Test yourself against the best team in your division. And then this is a tough spot for the Avalanche. And maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Avalanche win this hockey game. But this number with the Blues, it's too sharp. It's too glorious. There's too much opportunity for us to get a huge score here. And Binner is playing spectacular. And this game means everything to the Blues. And I fucking love, I can't wait to watch this fucking game. Win or lose, I can't wait to watch this game. I believe I've got the sharp side. I've got huge value. I have the opportunity for a huge score. This is gambling right here in a nutshell. <laughs> this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want, and I found it, and I'm on the blues. Okay, and I will add Jake Neighbors point plus one forty three current line at uh, at at Pinnacle. Okay, so yeah, so if, if Colorado wins five three, but but one of those points is for Neighbors, I'll, I'll get a win there. Yeah, I love wow. it. And there's Razor Sharp picks in the house. Razor, I can't wait to see you Thursday, my man. Ooh, ooh, too long, two years, Razor. It's been two years. Can't wait. And then uh, Gifted Cartel says he's rolling with me. Says home dog playing better. Uh, fifth game, uh, you know, looking for their fifth straight. He's going to back the Blues. I absolutely love this spot. These are the spots that I look for, win or lose. I've been watching the Blues play. I've been watching all these games. I love it. What up, DC? What up, my man? So I'm on the Blues uh, plus 186. And you guys are probably right. That hour and a half before game time, there's probably avalanche money that comes in, but. It's just blues are too sharp aside, you know. Love it, Razor. Respect okay. my man. Can't wait. Okay, let's roll on. Next ball on the board. San Jose, Nashville, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, and the only analysis here is just the spot, right? San Jose can't really buy a win. One and 13 in their last 14. So the fair line for them in those 14 games was over minus 1,000. Nashville, back home from a West Coast trip. They've been dominating, right? Won 12 out of their last 14. So they should have been like a plus nine, you know, minus 9,900 favorite or whatever uh, over the past uh, bunch of games or so. They're, you know, minus 400 or so here, a relatively low total. And the question is just, is this, is there any reason to think this is like a letdown look ahead spot? For, uh, for Nashville, or do they still want to win? If they still want to win, then I don't see how they don't get it, and maybe they are worth a shot at minus one or minus one and a half, even as a uh, as such a massive favorite here. But now San Jose can't really buy a win. Nashville playing great, and now Nashville is a, is a huge favorite here. What do you think, Jim? But definitely, I was thinking Luke Evangelista over two and a half shots. I've been hitting those shots and they, those have been really low for the past bunch of games for him and uh and and i don't see why this one should be as low as it is uh once again but tell me what you think about the game jim well i i agree with your whole sentiment in that the, the predators with their leadership with luke shen uh, you know with with mcdonough they're not going to take the sharks lightly they're not going to so i but I just can't take them at a minus one and a half at this number. I just can't do it. Like I just, as much as I expect them to be accountable here against the weak hockey team, I can't take a minus one and a half. It's minus one sixty right now at, at Bet365. Maybe I could have got better. Uh, so I love what the Predators are doing. I'm about to catch my eighty-seven and a half season win total. It's all great, but I, I just can't. I can't bet this hockey game. Uh, I just this is ridiculous, ridiculous number. They're just such a huge favorite. I get it, but I just don't want it. 
Okay, well, I'm going to take the Evangelista uh, shots prop over. I, when I first saw it, it was like uh, it was 140. Now it's uh, I guess I get 136 at Pinnacle, so I'll take that Evangelista over two and a half at at plus 136. And uh, you know the sort of the obvious plays also would be Forsberg over three and a half, even at a big favorite line, because uh, you know if they roll, they roll. Although maybe I guess they'll jump out to a big lead and then Sidmer and then Roman Josie to get a point. Got to be okay at least, right? Uh, I mean, when you have a big favorite game like this, do you think that maybe the star players' uh, uh, props are not as good, even though they're going up against an inferior competition? Because if they do jump out to a big lead in one way or another, then they'll sort of take the foot off the, the foot off the gas. I do. It's just not a Nashville Predator thing. They're just not that type of squad. So I, okay, I, but yeah, it does. It does. It's not as bad as basketball. You know, right, right, it, right, it, it right. Hit everybody so. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll stick just with the Evangelista prop for now, and I might add on uh, Forsberg and Josie. I also like Zetterland over uh, two and a half shots on goal as well. But for now, officially just Evangelista. I can't wait to talk okay. about the rest of the cards. So let's hammer away. We got a huge card ahead of us, so let's hammer away. My yeah, mind. Montreal and Edmonton is the next game on the slate. And again, a huge favorite here. Montreal generally crappy. They do get a win here and there, but mostly losing. Much less shitty than San Jose, though. And Edmonton lost that last game to Colorado in OT. And they actually lost three out of their last five. Uh, you know, but two of those, you know, were, were kind of on the roads. So maybe you give them a little of a pass. Feels like a huge bounce back spot for Edmonton, unless unless for some reason you think that uh, that they don't even really care about the last game in, in Colorado. But if they do, feels like a huge bounce back spot for Edmonton. Maybe minus one, maybe the team total over. And uh, Connor McDavid was shut out in his last game. So maybe uh, over one and a half points here, even at minus 150 is good. Uh, Zach Hyman to get a goal feels like a big bounce back spot for Edmonton, unless it's not. What do you think, Jim? You know, it may be, it may be, but this is a great opportunity for the Habs. And do I want them for 60 minutes against the Oilers? No, but I want them first period here. And mm -hmm. this isn't as much. I've got another one that I want more. And this is not a, a plus a half. This is you take a risk and go for a huge score. And Montreal coming off their second straight loss, fourth in five games, five to a Calgary on Saturday. Now they get to play McDavid in a sold out barn. You know, Edmonton, maybe they're upset after losing to Colorado, but then do you get up against the worst team, one of the worst teams in the league? I mean, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do the opposition though you know they're going to get up for this so can you know and the oilers have had a pension of starting out poorly now slatsy on oilers first period minus a half plus 103 you know i get it uh but i've watched a lot of oilers games and i backed them a ton and there are a lot of first periods where they just they they just don't come out the way you expect it. And when you look at who are these teams where these first periods where they don't come out as hard as you want them to, it's against the weaker teams in the league. So I'm going to wait, and I'm going to wait. This line's going to move and move and move towards the Oilers. It opened up minus 373, now minus 389. And I'm not, again, this is not taking them plus a half. This is, you know, Let's make a thousand dollars on a three hundred dollar bet type of situation. Now it won't be quite a thousand dollars, but that that's what it is. And and I don't care. No, I don't 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 I don't want to say don't care. You know, if I lose this bet, I lose this bet. This is the reason why you have a bankroll. Because certain times or certain opportunities to take a shot, and there's another one coming up on this card, and I know you guys have probably already put it together what it is. I'm taking the Habs first period. This, you know, Suzuki and this the group on that first line have a ton of skill and a ton of speed, and they know they're going up against the great McDavid. They're going up against McJesus in his barn. Why can't they play great hockey for 20 minutes? Why can't I have a lead going into the second? So I'm going to be on the Canadians first period. I just have to uh, have to wait patiently. Okay, and by the way, Jim, I am going to throw on Roman Josie point. It's actually up to 190 at uh, at Pinnacle and some other places, but Heritage still has minus 175, so that's another one I'm adding on. Roman Josie point minus 175 uh, at Heritage. And in this one, you know, McDavid got shut out in his last game. Why would you not want a big bounce back for him here? 
I want bounce backs against the best teams. I, I don't, mm-hmm. I when, when a bad hockey team comes in, I'm not sitting there thinking that he's champing. Uh, you know, look, he, he's, he's a quality, quality hockey player, but I just, I just think this is a ridiculous number. And North End is saying Montebo's locked in. The Habs can hang for 20. Look, this first line for the Montreal Canadiens, Suzuki, Caulfield, and Slavkovsky, you know who they want to play up? They want to go up against McDavid. They want to go up against McDavid so badly. Does McDavid want to go up against Caulfield and Suzuki and Slavkovsky? Does he give? Does he care? You know, we, this is the fun part of it. You make these calls, and then you see how it all bangs out. But this is an opportunity for me to have a, to, to get a huge score, and I do not think that the Habs – are as bad as the implied probability the market indicates. Yeah, this is a massive, massive line here. Massive disrespect. You know, I just – look, I, this is an f- incredible opportunity for the Habs. Now, look, maybe the Oilers come out and take have a 2-0 first period lead that's all well within the realm of possibilities. But from an implied probability situation in 20 minutes, I think I'm live here. And shout out to our guy, Kelly McKinnis, has let the madness begin. We're almost there. We're almost at college basketball. But, yes, I'm going to be on Montreal first period. It's going to be a full unit, and it's not going to be plus a half. Okay. And I will add on Zach Hyman to score a goal at plus one plus 100, even money at, uh, at Heritage. I will take that. Yeah, you had a chance to beat Gretzky's record. Uh, that was too. It was very exciting. And then he kicked the puck in. So for a second, we thought he broke Gretzky's. Uh, cons- he had scored goals in 10 straight games. Okay. Uh, I also think I also think Hyman uh, no assist uh, at at like minus two hundred might be a, a good sh- a good uh, play as well. But I'm not going to add that one on. But Hyman not to get an assist at minus two hundred looks very tempting as well. Let's roll into the Sabres knuckleheads game. Okay, here we go, Buffalo. Let me get my uh, let me get my friggin' notes. But yeah, here we go, Buffalo and uh, and Vancouver. Sorry, sorry. Let me just get it get it all here. All right. So, you know, Buffalo back to back played last night, beat Seattle six two. Decent team, one, four, or five. But now Vancouver off of two straight home losses as a fave. So if you think something's wrong with them, as maybe is wrong with, I don't know, New Jersey, the Islanders, some other teams, I don't know, then you want to stay away from them as this big of a dog. But if you think that there is that they're basically a fundamentally good or great team and just kind of fluky circumstances for their two straight home losses, then Great spot to take Vancouver, minus one, and first period. And if I were going to do that, I would take the first period because I learned my lesson with the Islanders. They lost that friggin' game to Ottawa, but I got bailed out a little bit because of the because the first taking the first period as well. But I guess, got to think, great spot for Vancouver, right? Well, I was on that spot with you with the Islanders. I didn't have the first period, so I just lost in the game. I was so confident in, too, after back-to-back shutouts. Fucking and we watched the Ducks. Stupid. The Ducks in that situation against the Blues, back-to-back shutouts, and they won. They were up 1-0 after the first period as well. Uh, Here we go, Buffalo-Vancouver. Now, a problem here, you guys, and I used to talk about it with you, Pete, is that I think I'm at a disadvantage because I watch all these games. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's over 6 minus 114, opened up at minus 115, and from the money line here, we have... uh, Sorry, from the money line, we have the Canucks sitting here at minus 194. Uh, This opened up uh, minus 198 it's now minus 191 a very small move towards buffalo sabers now mikey money uh, this says you know fade the dog on the second leg of a back-to-back vancouver minus one he's been absolutely right and crushing these spots and he sent me you know the the stats for all the teams on the second half of back-to-back and but but i don't understand exactly what's happening in vancouver mm. and that you know we watch him beat the jets 5-0 with jets on the second half of a back-to-back that game against the Capitals on Saturday night was the worst I've seen them play all year. Mm. I couldn't believe how bad they were playing. They weren't even getting opportunities. They weren't. It wasn't like they got unlucky. They just they were soundly beaten by the Washington Capitals. And I, I just I'm stuck with how bad they played. Now should mm. I sit here and say, oh, they're going to bounce back? Is that what I should say? They're going to bounce back, probably. And maybe 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 Mikey's right. But I just can't, for the life of me, after what I saw, I, I think there might be a problem with this Canucks team. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the Elias Lindholm pickup was bad. Again, why do you have to pick up another team's trash at a big number and think you're getting something from them? You're still, now, sure, they wanted to get rid of Kuzmenko, but Lindholm is playing bad. Right now, Elias Lindholm is a bad third-line center on the Canucks. So he's nowhere to be found on the power play. 
already in talk it's doghouse i mean i just you know you know mikey's probably right i would like to see the canucks bounce back but they were so bad and so what is talking going to beat the shit out of them and have them ready to go maybe probably but there are enough games on this card for me to just to, to learn about the Canucks. This is a real mm-hmm. learning about the Canucks situation for the playoffs. Yeah. They better step up and, and hit beat this Sabres team who's playing so well. Enjoy, like, you know, Bowen Byram there. And don't forget Bowen Byram, Vancouver Giant, star Vancouver Giant, fourth overall pick by the Avalanche now with the Sabres with the middle stat trade. I, I got to stay off this spot. But Mikey's, you know, the blind fade makes sense. Now, if you watch the whole Canucks game, maybe you're supposed to not believe what you see, the undoing project, and and think that they're going to bounce back here. But it was a horrific display of hockey, and I don't want the Canucks. I want to see them step up here, which they've been doing against teams on second night back back. Uh, I'm off. I'm off this spot. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll take some shots, Jim. I'll take Vancouver minus one, minus 128. That's the current line of pinnacle. And I also think that if they bounce back, it's probably because uh, JT Miller gets together a little bit, right? He's he's kind of the one of their leaders, right? But he played well. You know who's invisible and who's going to be this chain around our neck? Another horrible contract that's going to follow us around is a, is Pedersen. Mm-hmm. Pedersen, yes. Who I've been his talks unders, about. Yeah. He, he is not a star. He has got toddler shoulders. He <laughs> is being he's invisible out there. JT Miller's hitting. JT Miller's doing everything. Uh, Pedersen is nowhere to be found. And we could go into another playoff where he's nowhere to be found. I mean, if you look at the difference between the Nylander trade and the Pedersen trade, everybody's bragging about, or sorry, the contracts. Everyone's bragging about the Pedersen contract because he's younger. This Pedersen contract is going to be a weight around this team's neck. He's going to be, it's going to be a huge problem. And everybody talks all this shit about, you know, how good Pedersen is. It's a problem. He's a problem. It's going to, this is going to hurt the franchise moving forward. So. Okay. Well, I will take, um, I'll take Vancouver minus one. I'll take some pinnacle lines here. Miller over two and a half shots minus 101 and Miller to score a goal plus 192. Those are both uh, current, uh, current pinnacle lines, Jim. Thank God for JT Miller. All right, let's roll on. We got to we got to speed this up, Pete. We got so many games coming up. Yeah, Tampa Bay Vegas. This one I didn't look into uh, uh, that deeply, but Tampa Bay, of course, uh, has uh, has won three in a row, scoring a lot before that they had been slumping. So, what's is it, did Tampa Bay turn a major corner here? Vegas, they've won three or four before that. They were not winning. Vegas, a decent favorite. Total six and a half. I didn't look into this game too deeply, uh, so I want to hear what you seem uh, you would have to say about it. But obviously, current form, the lean would be Tampa Bay as a dog. And I'm on them. I'm with Kelsey on the lightning here. Now, what I think is happening is the Vegas is getting into playoff form. And Nicholas Waugh, Chandler Stevens, and, and Anthony Manta, I mean, that that's a that's a playoff line. I mean, what is everybody over six, four on that line? I mean, like the, the Vegas is, is, is grounding into form, but uh, Peter Angelo and Shea Theodore, they've both taken a step back. They're getting older. They're not as good as they were last year. Swiggy says, Duclair brought Hart back to Tampa. I don't see how anyone could not want to ride this Tampa train. Now, obviously my ROI on Tampa has not been good this year. And I've been waiting for this to happen. And I was beating myself up for not taking them against the Panthers. But I'm taking them here. It, mm. You know, I try to stay away from like w- what, you know, we talk about in baseball with the weighted coin flips. But this to me is a weighted coin flip. This is an absolute flip. And I'm getting a nice plus money spot. There's been a two cent move to the under six naps, gone from minus 110 to minus 112. And then from the money line standpoint here, uh, we are sitting here with Tampa at plus 120 right now. And I got them at plus 119, but it's sitting at plus 120 right now. I'm not entirely sure where the line's going to go. Also, Hayden Fleury's day-to-day with an undisclosed injury. You know, he's a back-end defenseman who does help. But, you know, this Lightning team gets to go into Vegas and challenge himself against the Stanley Cup champions. It's the easiest coaching angel angle ever. Are you guys the real deal? You're stepping up. You're showing it. Now we go show it against the Stanley Cup champions. Vegas isn't sitting here thinking this is a huge test for us. For the now they they're trying to get ready for the playoffs and all that. But uh, I, I like I, I'm going to ride the Lightning probably mm-hmm. for the rest of the regular season. Really? No. Yeah. I, I, North Ender. I've been watching them too. This team is turning into our worst nightmare. 
And now I, I don't think they can beat Carolina. And if they have to play Florida without Ekblad and Bennett, or sorry, yeah, Ekblad and Bennett, they'll they'll beat Florida without if Florida doesn't have Ekblad and Bennett. But uh, I think Florida can beat the Lightning. Uh, in saying all that, I uh, the, I'm on the Lightning here. And all that right, I will that add on uh, Brand. Been... I will add on Brandon Hagel assist at plus one forty four current line of pinnacle. Hagel assist at uh, at one forty four. I mean, when they play well, he usually gets an assist, right? I love Hagel. So he's a great player. Yeah, he's a yeah, great player. He's great. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, plus one forty four. Hagel assist. I'll make that uh, official. All right. You want to move on, Jim? Yes. Yes. Let's roll. Okay, Minnesota Anaheim is the next game, and uh, and once again we have a here's another spot similar maybe to the St. Louis game. We have a huge home dog, and I don't know something was telling me once again Anaheim at this line might be the play. Minnesota, pretty good, but not that great on the road. They have their home issues, and Anaheim, of course, you know six straight losses. They're terrible, but how bad are they really? Now they're home. They're a huge dog. They could get a win, and uh, I was thinking at the very least maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, Kalorn to score a goal or some props for Anaheim to do well. But uh, huge dog line for Anaheim. They've been awful, but maybe this is a spot where uh, I definitely wouldn't want to take Minnesota here as this big of a road favorite in light of how Minnesota has been on the road all year, right? It's not that for me. It's Eric's neck. Uh, you take Eric's neck right. out of the lineup, I, I don't want to back them. He's he's right. such an incredible center. He's perfect for playoffs. He just he does so many things right uh, the big difference between anaheim and st louis st louis won four straight anaheim's lost six straight i mean I, that's the uh, apples oranges part of it but right. minnesota minnesota's penalty killing is terrible and now it's worse without eric's neck uh now you know you take adam henrique off of the ducks you start seeing how important he was to the squad no zegris no mason mctavish no brock mcginn and no Rocco gudas but all four of them are like could one or two of them could come back here uh you know I actually did think about Minnesota for a little bit, uh, but I was just without Eric's neck. I just couldn't move on them. I don't want anything to do with the ducks and, and, and the wild. I, but I did spend some time thinking about moving on the wild minus one. Uh, I won't though. Uh, they played pretty good against St. Louis. Uh, they're, they're, they're playing with a lot of heart. They're, they're another team that that's, I fade often and it's not enjoyable fading them, but I'm off this spot, Pete. Okay. And, but, okay. So you don't want, uh, all right, let, let me see. I was thinking about, uh, you know, maybe Alex Killorn to, 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 uh, shot prop or, or, or his goal prop and, uh, and, uh, Vitrano. I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to do that here. Uh, probably small value on, on Kaprizov to get a goal at plus money anyway, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to probably add on some Alex Killorn props, uh, but let's talk about another game. Um, let's talk about Final the next game, game on, on the board. Final game on the Chicago board and LA. Podcast. Here we go again. Another massive home favorite here. And once again, we've got uh, maybe some revenge for Chicago. Chicago has actually won three of their last four, but all of those three wins were against shitty teams. The one loss was against LA, a five zip shutout. And LA now back home off a three game trip. And, uh, you know, LA pounded Chicago two games ago. So maybe. Chicago with some revenge here, but if LA needs wins, then maybe they uh, just want to get a, a, a team, a, a win, an easy win against a team that they can dominate. Um, so I was thinking about, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I was thinking about at least some, some, some offensive props for LA and, uh, and maybe Seth Jones over two and a half shots uh, on goal just to, to try to get some revenge for Chicago. Another massive favorite. What do you think, Jim? I'm on the Blackhawks first period. Mm. Uh, the, the expecting the Kings to show heart at home after a loss just hasn't been happening all year. And this is another situation. Look, yeah, the Kings can be up 2-0 after the first period. But this is a not a plus a half. This is a full unit bet on the Blackhawks' first period. They've been playing better, yes, against weak competition. Their lone loss over the last four games is that ugly 5-0 setback at the hands of the Kings on Friday night. So... You just dominated a group of men, and now they're coming into your barn. And do you care? Like, I, I fought a guy once who hated me so much. <laughs> he hated me. He despised me. And I didn't care that much about him. And I remember before, we, but you know, everyone's circling us, and he hated me so much. He was looking at me. He just wanted to just and, – and he was on an edge that I wasn't – I didn't have. I was making jokes. I didn't care. You know what the Blackhawks just got embarrassed by the Kings. They want to show that they're men, and do the Kings care that much? You know, 
yeah, they're coming off a loss. If I can get the Blackhawks to score a goal to handle themselves for 20 minutes, I get this enormous score with revenge in mind. I mean, that's 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 a bet I'm going to make. Uh, Real deal prime says Chicago to respond on the road. I don't think so. That's why the line is the way it is. I mean, if you want the Kings at minus 385, then go forth. I mean, I just look, I, look, I, this isn't about anybody else's action. We break down the games and try to give you all the information we can. I'm going to be on the Blackhawks first period. Uh, Kelly McKinnon says, did I win the fight? No, I, I lost the fight, but it was a bad situation because uh, we kind of rolled down like a hill. The guy got on top of me and then he punched, tried to punch me in the face, but he, and I was just panicking and he hit a rock. So his hand came up with all this blood and my friends thought that that was my face. So Affleck <laughs> came in and he, and he kicked him off of me. And then he looked at me and I was fine. So then, of course, Affleck had to fight uh, Reed's friend. And so it just, uh, it was just it was more problems. But yeah, I, I didn't win, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be on Blackhawks first period, not plus a half for the score. And, you know, we'll see how this shit bangs out. All right. I'm definitely, by the way, adding on Kalorn to score a goal at plus 282. That's the current line pinnacle. That's in the Anaheim game. And uh, and this one, yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I'm I thinking that uh, Seth Jones over. I mean, if, if Chicago is going to come in and, and, and try to get some revenge, Seth Jones is probably going to have an active game for them, right? Uh, at least with his shots. It's, it's expecting Seth Jones to show heart is another thing that has been missing in the end. I thought he was going to be a great defenseman. I mean, I was, yeah, uh, so you, so you're not uh, you're you're not high on him. You think he's a, a low character guy? I just thought he was going to be a great defenseman. And when he was traded for Ryan Johansson, I thought both of them were going to have big NHL careers. They're both useless castoffs that nobody wants, and they're paid too much money. Useless cast. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully he'll be a little bit useful tomorrow. I'll take his. Uh, I'll take his shot prop. Uh, two and a half plus one eleven. I'll, I'll. I'll go with that. Seth Jones over. Two and a half shots plus one eleven is the uh, is the current line at uh, at Pinnacle. And uh, yeah, and I'm thinking that Doty to get an assist for LA is kind of no brainer ish. And maybe Fiala to get a goal. You think you think it's going to be a low scoring game? Is there any reason to think that the LA, uh, uh, you know, stars won't be uh, offensively productive here? You know, if you've trusted them at home, you're probably in negative units, like I am on the mm -hmm. season. Right, right, right. But uh, they need to get their shit together for the playoffs here. It's already cost McClellan his job. You know. So. Okay, let me just uh, let me just uh, glance very quickly, and uh, and I guess we can. Uh, we can wrap it up. I think I will throw on uh, Doty. Let me just uh, let me just ex examine a few things here, and then we can uh, and then we can wrap this up. Okay. Uh, well, why don't you take a look at a couple of things, and and then but let's review action. We yeah, gotta get. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I'll take I'll take Doty assist uh, plus one fourteen. Doughty. It's like doubt. Doughty. Whatever. Uh, Doughty assist. Uh, I like it. Uh, so I'm on the Bruins minus one and a half at plus one fifteen. Then. My first bets of the day were the Lightning as well as the Blues. I got a plus 119 on the Lightning, a plus 186 on the Blues. Uh, you know, those lines could go against me. I didn't think they would. But I do I do expect that all the Oilers' cash will come in and uh, all of the Kings' cash will come in. They're late game, so I'm going to have to wait all night before I move on the first period for either of those two spots, uh, you know. So that's it. And then the under the under six in that Islanders game or the first period under does make a lot of sense to me. I and, and if if Sorokin was playing like he did last year, I'd be all over it. But I'm gonna stay off of it at, at this time. I'm just gonna stick with the plan. A Ron Crawford spreadsheet play of uh, the day is Toronto. Uh, so take it away, Pete. Let everybody know what you're on, and then we'll roll into college basketball. Okay, yeah, and I will also uh, add on uh, in that. Um... In the LA game, I'll add on uh, Fiala to get a to get a goal. Let's see what the line is now. Yeah, one sixty seven. Okay, I'll chuck that one on a, a, as well. Down a little bit, but that's okay. So you want me to just uh, just review quickly everything? Yes, please. 
Okay, there's a lot. Boston minus one, minus 150. Heritage. Geeky goal plus 346. Marchand assist minus 109. And Zaka assist plus 134. Anything I, any book I don't mention is, is, is pinnacle by default. Nylander, Alex Nylander, over two and a half shots, minus 127. Caesars. Voronkov, over one and a half at minus 187. And Gottespierre, over one and a half at minus 158. Pitt, New Jersey, under six and a half, minus 108. Roslovich under, uh, sorry, over one and a half shots, minus 146. That was Caesars. Tyson Forster over two and a half shots, plus 148. Kocekny to get an assist, plus 155. Owen Tippett point, minus 128 at Heritage. Bo Horvat over two and a half shots, minus 107. Jake Neighbors point, plus 143. Luke Evangelista over two and a half shots, plus 136. And Roman Josie point, minus 175 at Heritage. Zach Hyman goal, plus 100. Vancouver minus one. JT, sorry, Vancouver minus one, minus 128. JT Miller over two and a half shots, minus 101. And to score a goal at plus 192. Brandon Hagel assist, plus 144. Alex Galorn goal, plus 282. Seth Jones over two and a half shots, plus 111. Dowdy assist, plus 114. And Fiala goal, plus 167. We'll see how it all turns out, Jim. I'm going to have a good time watching all these things win or lose tonight. Yeah, I... I'm a little nervous about the uh, action here because it, it's a late, you know, I have to see where I'm at. I don't want to feel like I'm reaching with these first period spots. I don't want to be down money going into these late games. So I'm a little nervous about it, but that's, uh, that's the, this is the life we chose. Uh, let's roll on to NCAA tournament action here. We have play in games. Uh, let's roll. P we started 6 40 PM Eastern. We have the number 16 seed Wagner Seahawks, 16 and 15. At the number 16 seed Howard Bison, 18 and 16, UD Arena in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, you know, Seth Towns, 26 years old in his eighth season of college hoops. It's a little ridiculous. Older than Tatum, who's been in the NBA for seven seasons. But he is very important. He's very important to this uh, Bison squad. You know, the way they took out Norfolk State was very impressive. We talked all about it on the show, how the books were pulling a fast one. And then Delaware State, it was impressive. Uh, but Wagner has been, you know, a more quality team over this last, over the last little while. I mean, uh, almost their loss against Fairleigh Dickinson obviously woke them up. Uh, then they started rolling. And then, you know, I, yeah. You know, seven and nine in conference, both of these teams have surprised. And here they meet to get into the tournament, to get the tournament started. The taint play of the day is in. It is under 128 and a half from our guy, Matty Ice, who won our first ever bracket challenge. Remember, sign up for our bracket challenge. It's right up there. You can sign up for that and the confidence pool. And Tone Miggins is on Wagner first half money line. Wagner first half money line. Let's get into the line history here for this one. Take a look at the cash flow and then hand it over to Pistol Pete Loshak. We have two games in the tournament, two playing games to get it all started for us here. And this is the uh, this is the first one, not the most exciting one, but the first one. We're going to use Bet Online openers. We know Bet Online gets everything first. And if you're looking for a new account, please go to our website. Uh, popsportsradio.com to sign into the contest and open your account at bet online and you'll need a bet online account or bet us or Bavada account if you're rolling in texas with us for Papa palooza howard opening up at minus two and a half uh, they went to minus three within 10 minutes then back to two and a half then back to three and a half right now they're at three and a half but it's been bouncing all over the point place we have a one point move uh, towards the bison then from a total standpoint here you have it sitting at 128. Sorry, she sorry, yeah, 128 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 127 and a half. We have a one point move to the over. And then cash flow. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Then cash flow for this first one. Now, when I think about who these teams have faced, I think that Norfolk State is the best team that either of these two teams faced to get here. 82% of the tickets are on Howard and 96% of the cash. That's a very, very public spot for 21,997 tickets. Now, the line has moved a point, but you know if it hadn't, I'd be all over Wagner. 47% of tickets and 88% cash on the under, and yet it's going to point to the over. Here we go. We have the taint play of the day, Wagner, Howard under 128 and a half, and Tone Miggins levels play of the day, Wagner first half money line. Pete, your thoughts on this one? 
Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily uh, love it, but definitely leaning Wagner and leaning under. Uh, not first half under, though, and uh, although that could be a good bet, I'm just not uh, <laughs> not quite seeing it yet. And uh, and definitely leaning Wagner first half as well. I understand the line has moved in the opposite direction. That's cool, though. Uh, yeah, leaning Wagner. I don't know if I want to uh, make it official, but definitely leaning that way. I mean, I would like to be on the other side of all this money on Howard. So, you know, with, with sitting here at this point with all of this cash on Howard, 96% of the cash, I would like to fade that. But I don't think I have the conviction here. Uh, we have Tone focusing on the first half money line on Wagner. It certainly feels like a Wagner or yeah. nothing spot for me. No, you know what? I'll make, I'll make the first half an official play. I'll take plus two minus 115 current line at – um. At Pinnacle, Wagner, first half, plus two, minus 115. Money line's probably good, too, but I'll be a little safe. And take the first half, plus two, minus 115. First official play, Wagner. Well, I'm interested in that. I'm not going to move on that uh, yet or after the show, but I'm interested in that. So Wagner, uh, first half, plus two. What was the juice? Minus 115, Pinnacle line. Minus 115. And Mikey Money. The, your grandma's wearing your sister's panties again. Play of the day is Wagner plus three. You have to say that very quickly. <laughs> as quick as possible. Uh, and the pig milk play of the day from our guy, Billy Friedrich, Virginia, first half of my line. We'll get to that. So there we go. We have lots of uh, plays of the day here on Wagner. The public all over Howard. Uh, and... To highlight it all, we have Matty Ice, the bracket champion of last season, delivering the taint play of the day on the under 128.5. We rock on. We roll on to the next spot on the board. The next playing game, and this one is going to be so much fun to watch. Not that the Wagner game isn't, but this one's going to be so much fun to watch. Uh, let's set this one up for everybody. We have a Colorado State Rams 24 and 10 uh, at the number 10 ranked Virginia Cavaliers 23 and 10. We are at in Dayton, Ohio for this one. You know, that was a pretty ugly loss to Colorado State against New Mexico, and I, I almost live bet Colorado State a couple times, and I didn't, and I was very thankful that I didn't. Uh, they were rolling coming into that game, and it was 74-61 loss, and they're battle-tested in the Mountain West. Uh, the ACC on the other side also, uh, you know, you have a battle-tested group losing to NC State in overtime. They'd beaten Boston College in overtime, you know, they had that horrific loss at Duke. Uh, I don't know how much Virginia can really be trusted here. Let's take a look at the line history for this one. From a total scenario, we have a 121 open up at 119 and a half. We have a point and a half move towards the over. And from a point spread standpoint, we are sitting here with Colorado State minus two and a half. Colorado State opened up minus one and a half at 7.46 p.m. last night. 20 minutes later, they moved to two. Uh, then they moved to three at 8.20 in the morning. That was deemed a little too much about two hours ago. It moved to two and a half. But we have a one-point move towards the Rams. And when we get into the cash flow for this one, sorry, just give me a second to move up to this spot. We have 70% of the tickets and 47% of the cash on Colorado State. So it is public. The line is moving towards them. And then 30% of tickets and 76% cash on the under. Big bets coming in on the under, but this line creeping up. Take it away for us here, Pete, because we have the pig milk play of the day on Virginia first half money line and the stacks play of the day on the under 120 and a half. And there's JB, our guy, Junior Brown in the house. Great to see you. Phenomenal basketball capper uh, now in Costa Rica. Uh, Man, JB, my man, uh, says, I think it's easier to trust Virginia's defense over the shooting variants of Colorado State. A very legitimate 
statement. Nuke Worker has locked in on Virginia Moneyline first half and Kong's Clips on the first half under. Cody Norton on Colorado State Moneyline and the under same game parlay at plus 206. And Mikey Money says Virginia 0-7 against the spread is an underdog of less than four and a half points. Virginia is losing these games by an average of 15.29 points per game. North Anderson will probably end up on the Rams. Let's see what Pistol Pete Loshak does. Take it away for us, Pete. Rams, Cavs. You know, I'm going to pass on this one. Virginia, of course, uh, you know, a couple of one and dones, which is not good. But, uh, you know, as you've all talked about and Mike Yemba's pointed out, they're not necessarily the most reliable team in a spot like this. Uh, I just have a slight lean to the first half over at 55, but I'm not going to give that because this could easily be like a 28-13 first half. But um, if you gave me a free play on it, I'd throw it on the first half over. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to wait on this. I, I My problem is, is I, I'm a fan of the Rams, and I don't want that to get in the way here. I see the Rams as being a public spot here with not the big bets on them. So at this point, at this point, I'm going to sit with both these games longer. Uh, Loshak's moved on Wagner first half plus two. We have plays of the day, you know, with huge support in these two games. Taint play today on the Wagner Howard under 120 and a half. Tone Miggins on Wagner first half money line. The Mikey Money's, your grandma is wearing your sister's panties again. I can't believe this happened again. It's Wagner plus three. And then for Billy Friedrich, Pig Milk play today, Virginia first half money line. And Justin McKelvey stacks play today is the under 120 and a half here. So let's roll on. Roll on to NIT action here. Uh, Kelsey says better than your brother's panties, I guess. Yes. Much, much better. Much better. Much better. Let's roll on to NIT action for us here, Pete. Uh, we start with the NIT on at 7 p.m. Eastern, the North Texas Mean Green, 18 and 14, 5 and 5. On the road at the LSU Tiger 17, 15, 12, and 5 at home where I beat Marriage Assembly Center. Baton Rouge for this one. So the fact that LSU is in the NIT, probably something they don't, uh, we're hoping not to be involved in. But the fact that, you know, they're at home here, would they care at all, Pete? <laughs> North Texas was playing tight, strong basketball. I mean, they the only losses on their card of recent against, against Florida Atlantic. And there's really no shame in that. They care about being here. Uh, the AAC, you know, was a tough conference. I mean, we watched UAB come out of it. And Memphis goes to 11-7. SMU goes to 11-7. It was a better conference than I expected it to be this year. Going up against LSU that just lost to Mississippi State 70-60, to as you said, the one-and-done situation. They did come in looking good. I mean, their wins were against pretty weak opponents, but they did come in looking good. But that was a pretty ugly loss against Mississippi State. So let's take a look at the line history here for this one. NIT action. We have – oh, here we go. Sorry, where the hell is it? My bad. Uh, God, what the what have I done here? I don't know why I can't – oh, here we go. Uh, here we go. So North Texas right now sitting at plus 2.5 at minus 105. That's exactly where they open. Uh, this line came out at 12.44 p.m. yesterday. So this line's been out – for exactly 24 hours on the to the minute, and it's not moved from a total side of things here. Let's get over to the total. Oh, sorry, give me one second here. From a total side of things, we have this sitting right now at 135 and a half. It opened up at 136. We have a half point move to the under, and then when it comes to cash flow. 60% of tickets, 66% of cash on North Texas. Is there a chance here that LSU doesn't care about this basketball team? New Quicker says probably doesn't mean much, but North Texas won the NIT last year. Take it away for us here, Pete. Mean green against the Tigers. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a disappointment for LSU in general, but um, but you know, they've got uh, they, they've got a new coach. It's his, it's his second year. And uh, and I think they see it as sort of a uh, of a building uh, spot for them. I, I don't know if it's necessarily as much of a letdown as it would be for for other teams and other situations. Uh, but then again, North Texas, a, a scrappy team, they had a bunch of injuries all year long, and uh, so so they've kind of got uh, good character. I don't really want to fade them. I do kind of like the over. Uh, a little bit first half and full game although of course this could be a very low scoring game but i think uh uh you know i, I you know 
I bet the over and first half a little bit. Nothing crazy. Uh, free play, I would put it on LSU, though. Um, I do think that um, – that, uh, no, I don't think it's a letdown spot. I mean, this is a – you know, obviously – based on nothing based on just you know reading what they you know what the, what their quotes have been in the in the press and the overall situation for the team you know this is not some like you know veteran coach who's like you know trying to establish the team as like an elite program it's a new guy who's building a program and now they're finally in the in the you know they're they're in the postseason for the first time in a while and i think they're going to take it seriously but again north texas isn't necessarily a team i want to fade here so free play i put it on north texas i sorry put it on lsu and i did bet the first half and full game overs a little bit that is very very interesting and andrew g says uh, a noonan has been expected to start now for the avalanche uh, so there's been a big move towards the blues plus 168 now at fanduel um you know that I think that shows that this game doesn't mean that much to the Avs. It means so much to the Blues, but we'll see how it all bangs out. I love hearing it though. So that's North Texas Mean Green LSU. You know, it's funny. We so often gravitate towards these schools that we don't believe care that much. And the way you set this up, it feels like LSU will care about this game at home. And we know that. So often these big schools don't care, and it's moving towards still plus 180, says North Ender. I bet this is we'll see if there's movement. Huh. LSU is an interesting spot, especially looking at the cash coming in on North Texas, 60% 66 after winning it last year. Hmm. You've you've made LSU extremely interesting, which I did not expect to have happen here. Paul Taylor, the sailor in the house. What up, man? Uh, nice to see you. Uh, let's roll on here. Next up for us, 7 p.m. Eastern, we have Boston College Eagles, 19 and 15, 6 and 6 on the road. The Providence Friars, 21 and 13, 14 for home. Amica Mutual Pavilion in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, Boston College, of course, lost that overtime game to Virginia. They had beaten uh, Clemson and Miami. Uh, they were playing well. Uh, Providence, you know, beat Georgetown, then beat Creighton, and lost to Marquette. These are two teams that are playing well. Uh, ACC for the Eagles, 8-12 and 12 in conference. Uh, Providence, 10-10 and 10 in conference in the Big East. Let's take a look at the line history and hear what Pete thinks. You know, I, it's funny. I did. I really did not expect LSU to have, any, to have any interest in LSU, and you have really piqued my interest in them. Uh, this total sitting at 138.5 opened up at 140.5. We have a two-point move to the under. And then from a point spread, a perspection, we're, uh, perception, or I don't know what I'm trying to do with the P. I'm kind of caught in my head. We have Boston Perspicacity. College. Perspicacity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The perspective. That's what I was trying to Oh, say. oh, yeah. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Oh, makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah. Boston College opening up at plus six at 1244 p.m. Then at 8.20 this morning, Pete, there was a three-point move. Three-point move towards Boston College. A giant, giant, giant move yeah. this morning. Huge move. Maybe you can discuss that. It's come back a half point, but we just have this giant move there. And then from a cash flow perspective, 51% of the tickets and 69% of the cash on Providence, and yet we have the three-point move towards Boston College. 60% of tickets on the under and no help. Uh, with the cash flow. Nasty Nate says, because Carter is out. Take it away for us here. Pistol Pete, Eagles, Friars. Well, I was definitely, again, I took a little shot with the overs, and uh, I was definitely leaning BC just because, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they were excellent in the conference tourney. You know, they lost the last game at OT as a dog, uh, and, 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 and they just, uh, you know, Providence has some life to them as well, but I, th I feel like BC has, has more life to them, getting a few points, and, um, yeah, so I, I I can't explain the, uh, the 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 huge recent move, but uh, at like four and a half or so, I was definitely leaning BC, and I hit the overs a little bit as well. Because Carter is out, says our guy Nasty Nate. All right, so anything you want official for this spot, Pete? Uh, no, but I think I will make. Uh, I think I will make. Um, LSU an official play, and I think I will also take the uh, the over in that one as well. Although it could easily be very low scoring, but I think more likely than not, it um, it won't be. I won't take the uh, yeah. I'll take um, and I will take the first half just because uh, you know I'll, I'll probably hit the 
second half over, depending on how everything goes. But, uh, but yeah, I'll take uh, 63, the first half over 63 and a half minus 112 current line at um, Pinnacle. Okay. And I will take LSU. Probably should take them uh, full game. Well, you know, first I wouldn't half. mind. I wouldn't mind if Darius could could add to this because he maybe before because he says he's sixty three miles west of Baton Rouge and in the house with mm-hmm. LSU alumni. They end season tonight. So are you oh, saying there's that they end their season or they end North Texas's season tonight? What do you take from what Darius has just said, Pete? I don't really know. We I need guess, to uh, need you, to beg him to clarify to that, a little there's, bit. There's, there's uh, Pete's about to make something official, and I'm very interested on in betting it. So could you uh, jump in on this one? Just take the minus two and a half, minus one eleven current line at Heritage, unless uh, Caesars has a better line. But I'll take LSU. No, one ten at Caesars. Yeah, uh, LSU minus one ten. First half two and a first half minus. Uh, sorry, full game minus two and a half minus one ten, and the first half over at uh, sixty three and a half minus one ten. Also, current line at um, at Caesars. You're locked in. Let's roll on. So we have nothing for Boston College, Providence. Well, no, but uh, I do. I do kind of like BC, but I don't know if I want to uh, pull the trigger on it just yet. But I definitely. Um, I definitely like BC. Sorry, it's one oh, minus one hundred seven at Heritage. So give me the first half for the North Texas LSU. I'll t- I'll text you uh, everything that I have here, Jim, with the official lines. But yeah, minus one hundred seven current line at Heritage, North Texas LSU. Definitely liking overs though, and um, and a little bit lean to BC as well in the BC game. Not sure I want to make official. Next up for us. Next up for us is Xavier Musketeers. 16, 17, 3 and 8 on the road at Georgia Bulldogs, 17, 16, 12 and 6 at home. In Athens, Georgia for this one. So Xavier finished off the year losing 3 of 4, but they did beat Butler. And that was a razor sharp picks look that we all cashed on. Uh, But they lost 3 of 4 after the Butler spot. Now, you know, we cashed with them first half plus 9 against Connecticut, but then Connecticut completely took over. One by 27. Xavier, 9 and 11 in the Big East. Going up against the Georgia Bulldogs, who finished 6 and 12 in the SEC. Uh, they've lost two of their last three games. They beat Missouri by five, then played Florida and played Florida well, played Florida hard. Let's get into and uh, our guy Mikey Money saying, love this over points and no defense here. Yeah, that's except that it's exploded, but yeah. Well, let's go into the line history here and discuss the spot. First off, uh, Georgia sitting here at minus one and a half and minus one Oh eight. Uh, it opened up minus one at minus one ten. So there'd be no movement, nothing to worry about. Then from a total perspective, we're sitting here with it at one fifty four and a half. and a half up a one fifty two and a half, a two point move to the over. And then when we get to the cash flow, 53% of the tickets on Xavier, no cash flow and no help on the total. Take it away for us here. Pistol Pete Loshak, Xavier, Georgia. Yeah, I like the over as well. It opened at like 146 at like uh, FanDuel in some places. Then other places had it up at like 152. Now it's up to 155. Uh, you know, certainly not a lock, but 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 uh, I took small, small shots on, on the full game over and the um, first half over as well. As far as the uh, spread is concerned, not really sure. I don't have a good read on 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 how much uh, each team might is likely to care here. Of course, uh, Xavier was was terrible ATS to uh, to end the regular season. They lost eight of nine regular season. Georgia, I bet on them a bunch of times. Cash with them sometimes. Lost with them others. They played well in the tourney. So, uh, lean Georgia um, for sure. But uh, but but Xavier, you know, should have some. It would not be surprised if, if Xavier's up by 20 at the half. So uh, I might make a halftime play. Definitely like the over, though. And I think I will chuck on the uh, the first half over. We got 70. Uh, what do we got here? 74 minus 103 at Pinnacle. I'll make that official. I'll make that official. Xavier, Georgia, first half over. 74 minus 103, current line Pinnacle. First half over, 74 minus 103. Okay, let's roll on. Uh, next up, we have the Smooth Balls play of the day from our guy Jay Smooth, who I'm going to be hanging out with in 30 hours. About 30 hours. So I'm rolling with Jay Smooth. Smooth Balls play of the day is Cornell first half plus six. Uh, Cornell 
lost to Yale, uh, played well all season long. Played well all season long. We're a game back of Princeton, tied with Yale, but they lost to Yale when it counted and couldn't get to the finals uh, when Yale and Brown met each other. Uh, Ohio State was rolling, and they ha- we had the big bet between Saturated and young Jose Bouquet. Uh, Jose Bouquet was so confident in Ohio State that he said he didn't want the five points, Pete. Mm-hmm. And I screamed, no. I screamed, no. No, Jose, don't do that. But he said he didn't want the, the five points. And that almost was okay. But it turned out not to be as as Illinois won 77-74. I hammered this game live twice. And I was very excited when Illinois took care of his. But I did lose my pre-flop bet on Illinois minus five. But Ohio State sure came together late. Sure came together late. But the question is, do they care about this basketball game in Columbus, Ohio, Value City Arena? Maybe they do. Maybe they do. Uh, Andrew G says Cornell comes in mad after losing at the buzzer. Chase uh, Chase says you got to wonder how much or little really Sean Miller cares about the NIT. This isn't what he's used to being in. Georgia wins, I think, from Chase, from my guy Chase Chase. But here we are talking about this spot. Let's get into the line history for Cornell, Ohio State. This total sitting at 157.5. Opened up at 152. We've gone up five and a half points. Yeah. A huge move to the over. And then. Sorry, I have this better set up here in a second. I don't know why I don't. And then from a point spread scenario, we are sitting here with uh, Cornell plus 10 and a half at minus 110. That's exactly where they open, plus 10 and a half at minus 110. And cash flow wise for this one, 68% of the tickets are on Ohio State. Line's not moving. We don't know the cash flow and no help on the total, but we know it's skyrocketing. Take it away for us here, Pete. Billy Friedrich says this is just too many points. Matty Ice says Ohio State is so much momentum and positivity in their program right now. A few teams are as focused as they are to win this. NIT says Matty Ice. Take it away for us here, Pete. We have Cornell Big Red facing the Buckeyes. Yeah, uh, you know, I would love to give the over. I, I, I hit the first over that I found. I was able to find was as soon as I saw him. Uh, you know, now it's all the way up to wherever it is, 158 or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, I like the over. I like the first half over, although way less than when it opened. And uh, I guess I'll give it anyway. And, yeah, I, I, I was liking Cornell and Cornell first half. To start, but if Matty Ice has has a read on Ohio State, I mean Ohio State obviously is um, is a team that, it, it, when fully motivated, is great. I mean they made a tremendous turnaround at the end of the of the season. They covered almost all their games. So I really don't want to fade them. So I won't. I, you know my lean would be to Cornell, but I do like the over. Just not sure if I want to give it now that the uh, the uh, line is so high. But uh, I do like it. It certainly moved. Where are we? First yeah. half, yeah, seventy-five minus one twelve. All right. What else? What, what? Let me see what else I could get here. Seventy, seventy-four and a half minus one seventeen at Heritage. All right. I'll, 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 I'll give that. I'll give that Cornell, Ohio State first half over seventy-four and a half minus one seventeen. You got it. Uh, Lex Fields says Cornell play teams that don't play defense. DC Capper on Ohio State minus ten and a half. Let's roll on. Next up for us, 9 p.m. Eastern, we have South Florida Bulls, a disappointed Bull squad, 24 and 7. We're 7 and 4 this year on the road at UCF Knights, 17 and 15. UCF was 11 and 7 at home. And, you know, a rivalry of sorts with these two Florida based teams, Bulls and Knights, although, of course, UCF now in the Big 12. South Florida won the regular season title in the AAC, losing 93-83 to eventual champion UAB Blazers. A UCF lost to BYU in pretty ugly fashion. You know, they were playing good ball. You know, we had them a first half and full game against Houston. Uh, then they went to TCU and took them out, started the tournament by beating Oklahoma State by 15, and then lost uh, badly to BYU by 14. Team. Let's take a look at the line history here in this one. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong thing up here. A uh, line history wise on the spread, we have South Florida right now at plus six and a half. Uh, they opened up at five. There's been a point and a half move 
uh, towards UCF. And then from a total standpoint, we have this sitting right now at – sorry, here we go. Jesus, so many games here. Sorry, I was looking at Wednesday for a second. Uh, for a total standpoint, we're sitting here at 141.5, opened up at 140, so a 1.5 point move towards the over. And then cash flow-wise, come on. We have 60% of the tickets on UCF. We got no help uh, on anything. Action Network sort of dropping the ball here. Take it away for us here. Orlando, Florida, home of the UCF Knights, taking on South Florida, Pete. Yeah, I um, I think I like South Florida here. I also hit overs in this one uh, when they came out, and that line is uh, – where is that line right now? I've got like 140 or so. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, 141 and a half. All right, so again, it's gone over. I think I'll give um, – you know, at least first half, probably full game over in this one as well. Uh, I was leaning South Florida at like four and a half, five. Now it's up to six and a half. Not in time. I mean, of course, UCF has had some impressive wins this year. And then South Florida, you know, first in the AAC, then they lose the first game. They were great ATS most of the year. Uh, so it was sort of like, uh, you know, an educated guess that they'll come in here and, 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 and want to play well against an in-state rival. That's an educated guess though. Uh, so I was leaning South Florida, but the, uh, but the line has moved uh, in the opposite direction and also a little bit like in overs as well. But nothing official. No, I'll make first half and full game. Um, I'll make uh, first half and full game over official. Let me just uh, do a little line shopping here. <laughs> South Florida, UC. I'll just take the, I'll just take the full game, full game over. Uh, yeah, one forty-one and a half minus uh, minus one oh nine. That's a little tough, right. but okay. One forty-one and a half minus one oh nine. I'll make that official. You got it locked in. Uh, next up for us, uh, we stay in the NIT. Nine PM action. We had the Blacksburg, Virginia, home of Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech Hokies and Castle Coliseum are going up against the Richmond Spiders. Richmond Spiders 23 and 9. This year on the road, Richmond traveled fine. They were 7 and 5 on the road. Virginia Tech was very strong at home. 14 and 2 at home. We're talking the first round of the NIT here on Low Shack in the Bag. Uh, this is Pubba Palooza week, baby. And I'm so excited. Uh, Richmond lost their last two games of the season. Uh, you know, and that, that loss, the horrible 64 46 at loss. No, at George Mason was a sign of what was to come. Uh, they lose to St. Joe's right off the hop in the A-10 playoffs. A real ugly loss for them after, you know, Loyola and Richmond tied for the lead in the A-10. Uh, who would have thought the Dukies would be sitting here in their first uh, tournament since, what, 77 or 76? I can't remember, 77 or 76. Uh, Virginia Tech had their three-game winning streak snapped as soon as they got started in the ACC tournament losing 86 76 to florida state let's get into the line history here from a line standpoint richmond opened up plus six went to five and a half for a little bit but right back at six uh, it is juice to virginia tech so there's been a seven cent move at this number uh, from a total side of things here we're sitting here with a 143 and a half which is exactly where it opened at 143 and a half and then total wise here for this one we have 77 uh, percent of the tickets have come in on richmond uh, but we don't have any information on the cash flow, no information on the total. Take it away for us here, Pete, Richmond Spiders, Virginia Tech Hokies. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to pass on this one. Uh, I was leaning over, but it, it, I mean, this is a tough one. Virginia Tech is a team that uh, I bet successfully at times, so I don't like to bet against them. Of course, it's a big rivalry, but the question is just what is the uh, Richmond mindset here after, uh, you know, first place regular season, then a first game in the conference tournament loss. It is a rival situation, so um, the line's moved in Virginia Tech's favor that I've seen. So as of right now, I'll pass, but if uh, someone that I trust – like something on this game one way or the other, I'll probably tail it. And I might make a second half play as well. But, um, you know, like if Virginia Tech is is blowing them out in the first half, I'll probably take Virginia Tech second half as well. But we'll see. As of right now, nothing. Pass. Roll on to the next spot in the NIT. Three games left in the NIT. Then we're going to talk CIT quickly. Then we have a nice five-game NBA card. I've only moved on one spot on. And... Let's roll. Minnesota Golden Gophers, 18 and 14, 2 and 8 on the road this year. They traveled poorly. At Butler Bulldogs, 18 and 14, and 12 and 5 at home. Minnesota finished the year with three losses. The big one was at Mi versus Michigan State. We capped that beautifully here. Public on Minnesota. Minnesota, this ATS 
Golden Boy, and we faded it. We all got paid, and a lot of you guys moved live as well. Was, we capped it beautifully here. Uh, then, Damn it. But, I had Minnesota in that one, Jim. Oh, it was, it was I got to watch group. more Pub Sports Radio. Yeah, we were all, all of us were on. All of us saw through it. Uh, it was, it was no, really, I'm happy for you guys, actually. Yes. Yeah. It was that was a there were some really fun days last week, and that was one of them. Uh, Xavier but Butler played Xavier twice, you know, uh, beat them to close out the season and then lost 76 72 when it mattered uh, in the conference tournament, Big East Conference. You know, it was a uh, too bad for Butler, but here they get another opportunity here against a Minnesota team that's not very good and doesn't travel well. Uh, Lamont Williams in the house, Max Benning, NBA, uh, Denver Nuggets. Yeah, I mean, I get it, I completely get why you'd want to be doing that. I completely get it. Jacqueline, uh, nice to see you, Jacqueline. Great to have you back in action with us. Uh, let me uh, copy and paste the Denver look from our guy, Lamont Williams. I, I thought all I, – I stared at that, you know. It was uh, funny that the line moved from 7.5 to 7. I couldn't figure it out why that would be. It does seem like a slam dunk, slam dunk spot, which we will discuss here shortly. But let's go back to this Golden Gophers Butler Bulldog spot and let's get into the line history for it. this total is sitting at 115 and a half, opened up at 148 and a half. So we have a two point move to the over. From a spread look, we have a Butler sitting at minus four and a half, at minus 112. Uh, they opened up at minus three and a half. So we have a one point move towards Butler. And then cash wise for this one, we have. 74% of the tickets on Butler don't have a cash count, but 74% of the tickets line moving towards them. 75% of tickets on the under. Take it away for us here. Pistol, Butler Bulldogs in the Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Yeah, very, very tough one. Uh, obviously, uh, again, this is one where, you know, maybe closer to tip, I'll see something or someone I, I know who I respect will uh, will have a play on this one and maybe I'll tail it. But uh, obviously, Minnesota, ATS juggernaut for most of the year and and, and Butler, uh, you know, started the year great. But then after that, they were they were a, a pretty good fade. I think they lost about 60, you know, like two thirds of their of their uh spreads ATS. Uh, but then again, yeah, so this is, this is a, this is a tough one. I, I guess I would be leaning Butler for now, but definitely no play and probably will pass. Maybe have a second half play on it, but uh, as of right now, pass. Jake Burns on mini plus five, Matty icing only Minnesota here. It says four and a half is too many. Uh, Justin, I cannot believe that we're within days of just, gambling nonstop at the South Town 101. When you walk into the South Town, when you get into, because the, the the main room is the full bar, then we have the back room with about, you know, 12 TVs, the studio. It's where we'll be, you know, playing poker. Not for the main tournament, but for the final table. You'll just be like, this is heaven. It's home. It's home, baby. It's home. Oh, God. It's, it's home. Like, it's just, it's, uh, and then your expectations of these cappers that you've worked with for so long, when you, you're expect, you know, in so in so often in life, your expectations don't get fulfilled, right? <laughs> you, you always have to have realistic expectations. It's the most important thing in life: realistic expectations, which means really expect almost nothing out of people. And then when you get <laughs> when you get with your this group, and your expectations get fulfilled, it's absolutely magic. Like there's just no other word for it. Uh, you know, you, like I. And it's also hmm. pretty cool when your expectations are just like yeah what you were expected it didn't exceed like with jose bouquet i was i knew what i was expecting and i met him and that's pretty much what it was yeah <laughs> yeah man oh man god I wouldn't you say they why, were low. do you know why did, did i don't think people know why you're growing your facial hair uh, out the way you do before i don't know why i'm growing my facial i don't fucking know no i do i know why because at some point a puddle palooza <laughs> He's yeah. gonna do something dramatic with that facial hair, and it's gonna be laugh out loud, funny. When he came back from the barber at Pablooza, it broke me. It absolutely broke <laughs> me. I saw you in the 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 what, whatever that store was across the street. Yeah, I was. Uh, that broke. That me. was great. That was there, great. It's facts. The best life is one without expectations, of people. Absolutely. Uh, you can't have expectations. Uh, you'll just get let down. Except with our group. Kansas State Wildcats next up for us, 9 p.m. Eastern, 19 to 14, 2 and 8 on the road at the Iowa Hawkeyes, 18 to 14, 13 and 4 at home. And we're at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, Iowa, a very tough place to get victories. Uh, let's take a look at the line history here for this one and uh, set 
this game up. First off, setting it up, uh, Kansas State, you know, at home, beat mighty Iowa State. Then beat Texas to start the tournament off 78-74. And then Iowa State exacted revenge. Uh, Iowa State, a good team, right? Two, uh, second seed, sorry, in, in the tourney. Uh, Iowa lost to Illinois and then began their tournament with an immediate loss to Ohio State. Who wants to be playing in this tournament is the big question here. Iowa sitting right now at minus five. They, oh, excuse me. Yes, at five, but they opened up at six and a half. So we have a point and a half move uh, towards Kansas State. Then from a total side of things here, we have a 157 and a half. It's opened up at 157, a half point move to the over. And then when we get to the cash flow, uh, no help whatsoever. Uh, Action Network giving us a blank canvas to work with. Take it away, Pete. Wildcats, Hawkeyes. Yeah, I mean, I want to take uh, Kansas State here, but yeah, it's it's entirely possible that, uh, you know, they're down by 23 at the half and just don't show up. And in that case, I'll probably hit Iowa second half as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't bet this one, probably won't, unless again, uh, someone, and this one, I also like the over, but there's no way I can give it now. Now it's all the way up to wherever it is. Uh, Kansas State, a pretty impressive team, and Iowa not, you know, an overvalued team, very clearly ATS this year. But again, just because of the situation, I'm not going to automatically pull the trigger on Kansas State. And maybe that's a mistake. But yeah, leaning Kansas State, not betting it, though. And the market moving towards Kansas State. Let's get into the final spot here in the NIT. It is the UC Irvine Anteaters, 2498 and 8 on the road, at visiting Salt Lake City, Utah Huntsman Center. Very tough place to play. You get the Utes outside the Huntsman Center. They're bad, but here they are good. They started off the tournament by smack and grabbing Arizona State, and then they lost by 14 to Colorado. That line was so fishy. Why was it so low? I mean, Colorado was just in complete control. Uh, UC Irvine lost to Long Beach State. A lot of the teams talking about that. Long Beach State came in 10-10 and 10 in the conference, fired their coach at the end of the season, and roll all the way through the Big West Conference. Uh, with a big surprise, UC Irvine was 17 and three in this conference. Completely dominated this conference. This is a very, very tough place to play in at Huntsman. Let's take a look at the line history. This total sitting at 149 and a half opened up a 150 half point move to the under. And then from a spread perspective, this is sitting right now at plus eight and a half. Opened up uh, at eight. Went down to seven and a half until 30 minutes ago. 30 minutes ago, we had a one point move on the Utes. And when we take a look at the cash flow here, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. When we take a look at the cash flow, 80% of the tickets are on UC Irvine. Interesting. No help on the total. So the public backing UC Irvine in this one point move against it. Take it away for us here, Pete. Huntsman Center, Anteaters, Utes. Yeah, this one, um, let me see. <laughs> We're down on my notes here. Yeah. Uh, you know, once again, uh, the question is just. How much is there? I, I want to take Irvine here. Uh, worried that they might, uh, you know, just just be really pissed at themselves for, uh, for for what happened in the conference journey. So uh, I'm, I'm going to look into it a little bit more. Do the usual, get information, see who's on what, and maybe have a play on this one. Uh, you know, first glance would definitely be Irvine getting all these points. Uh, you know, Utah has a, a couple injuries as well, which is not great. So uh, you know, leaning leaning uh, leaning Irvine. It was a weird situation, you know. They're they're lost to Long Beach State, which was in a that that, that team had a had a had a very unique uh, emotional situation. Their coach was fired, but 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 they're still he's still there, so they're kind of playing for him. So it's emotionally a bizarre situation. I'm just not sure what Irvine's motivation will be here. I think they come to play, and I would be leaning Irvine for sure, but I haven't bet it yet. Yeah, that all. And, but then again, this is all. Sorry, this is also a situation where you have uh, uh, you know the Utah coach with his first postseason game with this team, so. I don't like to fade that either, really. I I have interest in Utah here, but I do want to see this market mature at this point. So uh, let's roll on to some CIT action here. Now, these games, the lines just came out, but let's do our due diligence on them because there may be opportunities for us to attack two games in the CIT today. We start 7 p.m. Eastern, Texas Southern Tigers, 16-16, 6-10 on the road, Tarleton State Texans, 23-9-11-3 at home. Uh, all these games in the CIT take place in Stephenville, Texas, home of the Tarleton State Texans. The Texas Southern, a lot of people thought they were going to do what they so often do, uh, play 
average in conference and then take over in the Southwestern or the SAC uh, tournament. And they didn't do that. They lost to Grambling. Uh, now they beat Alabama A&M, who were good. They beat Jackson State, who were good. Uh, good enough, you know. But then they lose to Grambling, 75-66. Going up against Tarleton State, who immediately lost to UT Arlington right off the hop. And that was a sad loss. Now, UT Arlington was a good enough team, but, you know, Tarleton State won game behind Grand Canyon throughout the uh, regular season. Let's get into the line history here for this one. This spread is sitting at a uh, plus 11 right now. A uh, Texas Southern plus 11, five cents of movement towards them. This line just came out uh, at Bet Online an hour ago, an hour and one minute ago. So there's been a five cent move towards Texas Southern. Uh, at this number from a total side of things this is sitting at 143 and a half which is exactly where it opened and then from a cash flow sense i don't know if they're even gonna i, I don't see how they could have any yeah there, there's gonna be no information on either of these two games so uh let's not worry about uh the cash flow any interest here in texas southern tigers tarleton state texans pete no, I mean, I didn't have time to look into either of these games uh, too in depth, and there's definitely a lot of uh, you know intangibles that um, are probably at play that I'm not aware of. Someone is, but uh, as of right now, I'm not aware of them. So as of right now, definitely both passes for me. I would, would like to take more time on this, but this could be a Tarleton State smash and grab spot. Uh, now, obviously, the line's put at that number. I think anyone seeing this line would be interested in Texas Southern immediately. Does Texas Southern care? Uh, I'm going to look into this further. But Tarleton State at home, a chance to you know, follow through with a good season. Let's go to the late game in the CIT. This is 9 p.m. Eastern. Abilene Christian Wildcats, 15 and 17, at Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders. Uh, Corpus Christi Islanders, a very, uh, very ugly situation in Southland. You know, looked lose immediately to Nichols State. Uh, was, you know, uh, very, very, very disappointing. Now, Nichols State wasn't a bad team, but a disappointing uh, tournament, immediately losing. Uh, they had a really juicy winning streak going on. Uh, Abilene Christian lost their last two games of the season. The last one to Stephen F. Austin was in the WAC <laughs> tournament. So they closed with win losers of two straight. Did not have a very good season. You know, Admus, of course, you know, on Texas now. Let's get into the line history for this one. This is sitting right now with Abilene Christian plus three and a half. They opened up at four. So we have a half point move towards Corpus Christi. And then from a total side of things, this is sitting at 142 and a half, which is exactly where it opened. And again, we have no cash flow information uh, at this point. Take it away for us here, Pete. Uh, do you have an angle, a lean? I know you want to wait for the market to mature. But what's your plan? Do you have one? Uh, I, or I just want to wait to uh, to do a little research into it before. Who cares about the market? I got to do a little research. Yeah, I just didn't look into this game that much. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, Abilene Christian was was great uh, ATS for for many stretches of the year, which which is often the case with them. And uh, you know, Tamu CC in the in the Southern was also great ATS most of the year. So that you know, that's a wash right there. I, I just have nothing on this game as of right now. All right, uh, let's roll on here and head over to NBA. But before we do, we want to touch on our two big contests. We have You can join on the link at the top of our chat. But this is our confidence pool, which is the one I'm really excited about, bringing something new. Uh, it's, it's a really, really fun pool. And so uh, Pete, uh, Jose is going to show you. He's picked a uh, UConn. And as you see here, let me uh, see it bigger on my screen here. Uh, as you see, UConn cost them 16 points. Uh, UAB cost them five points. So uh, that's not in seed, the numbers beside the team. That's how many points it will cost you. And then you see the points available. You have 90 points to build your roster of teams. So again, a one seed costs you 16. A 16 seed costs you one point. And you can put as many teams as you want. Uh, however you want to build your roster. There's lots of different strategies involved here. And please join. Uh, and big shout out, big shout out to uh, our guy, uh, Matty Ice, for winning the bracket contest last year. He's going to see if he can defend his championship. And then we have also the confidence pool. Please enter both. Uh, we have a lot of people entering right now, but, you know, the more the merrier. And it's also going to be fun to talk about uh, throughout the shows, throughout the weeks here. 
So there we go. Uh, let's roll into NBA Pete. Uh, we had Troy Torrance cap the card, did a great job on it on Friday. And I only moved on fading the Raptors. I only moved on the Magic and the Raptors team to a little under. They both cashed. I fell apart in NBA sandwiched around the All-Star break. But we're moving in the right direction. Uh, after falling completely apart, I'm down eight units on the year. I would see the black in front of me, and I've moved on one game on this card. Uh, Kelsey says horse race today, guys. No, we've moved the horse races to Wednesday. Wednesday and Friday, Kelsey. Wednesday and Friday. And if you become a gold member, you have your chance at winning $50 every Wednesday and Friday. And if you were at the Southtown 101, sounds like we're going to be doing a lot of horse races <laughs> against each other. Uh, so there it is. Gold members only horse races. Uh, take it away, Pete. Set these games up. I capped them, and I'm excited about them. Let's roll. NBA five-game card, and then we get into a, the first game of the Major League Baseball season with Sharpie and Jose Bouquet. Yeah, you know, Charlotte, pretty crappy. They get a win here and there, but they don't have a go-to guy. They're just bad. They're losing ATS, under-trending. Orlando covering. They they played earlier this year, very low scoring, and um, and Orlando won by about 13. So, you know, as of right now, uh, free play, sure, I'd chuck it on Orlando, even at minus 13, and sure, I'd chuck it on the under, even at two or three and a half or wherever it is. Lean to the Charlotte team total under, I guess, but probably just going to pass for me. You know, we talk about Charlotte not having a – go-to guy brandon miller will be that go-to guy and sure. he was just assessed a flagrant two and left the game on saturday saturday was a 109 98 loss at the sixers uh, hornet's second straight loss in third and four games honestly the magic are probably not the team you want to have player props uh, with a player against but i have a feeling a very angry brandon miller is going to show out tonight does that mean they have a chance at covering? I, I don't even want to get into that until we break it down a little more, but I don't like the player prop market. I try to stay away from it. I have a feeling Brandon Miller is going to show out tonight. And uh, obviously I'm going to want a little bit more time if I'm actually going to move on the player prop, because I rarely do want to move on them, but let's set this one up as well here. Uh, all of the stats I'm going to be giving you, giving you are back to the last five games. They're not post All Star break. Uh, Charlotte two and three in their last five games. Twentieth fastest pace in the NBA. Of course, we've been talking about it for the last two weeks. Pace is slowing way down. I guess teams getting into playoff mode defensively. Ninety six point one possessions a game for Charlotte. Orlando three and two. They've been playing slow all post All Star break and been playing well. Ninety four point seven possessions a game in the last five games. That's slightly faster than they were playing right out of the All Star break. That's twenty sixth fastest. Forty four point seven from the field, thirty three point five from three. So both teams are shooting poorly from three. I mean, these are as bad as you get in the NBA from three. We're going to use pinnacle line history here. This is right now with Charlotte at plus thirteen. They opened up at plus thirteen and a half. Now we see twelve and a halfs everywhere else. You know, but that's here. So it kind of feels like this was set up here for a spot where, uh, you know, the books open to the line where Charlotte might be appealing to some. Uh, cash wise, here for this one, we only have five games in NBA, and I think there's some juicy spots for us to attack. 54% of the tickets and 93% of the cash is on Orlando. Line's not really moving towards them. But again, I do believe Pinnacle put the line out a little higher so that Charlotte money would come in. And it's 50-50 for the total. And we have no cash information on the total. It's amazing. I guess we got to stop using Action Network because there's five games in the NBA. They all have at least 12,000 tickets in on them. And they're only giving us the cash flow on one total, uh, which is really upsetting. So... Hornets coming off their second straight loss in third and four games, 109-98, Sixers on Saturday. Trey Mann had to take over uh, when Brandon Miller was, you know, assessed the flagrant two. Uh, Hornets are two and seven this month. Magic coming off their third straight win, 111-96 at home versus Raptors on Sunday. They've won eight of their last ten. Bancaro looks like an absolute monster. And uh, Troy Torrance says all the cash flow sites right now are doing that. So it's uh, annoying. Uh, Matty Ice, my prop that I would move. I think that that he goes for over 16 and a half points today. Uh, Dan Kelly says you're paying for that. Yes, uh, $100 a year. It's Actually, it's like 160 Canadian. Take it away for us here, Pete. I know that you've set it up, but after my talk and looking at the market, <laughs> does that lead you to anything? No, no, pass. Free play on the side. I check it on Orlando. 
that's probably wrong. Free play on the total, I'd chuck it on the total. I think that might be okay. I think uh, I think Brandon Miller shows out tonight. I think he's angry. I think he's focused. I'm very close to a player prop, something I try to stay so far away from. Let's roll on to the next spot on the board, Pete. Rockets, Wizards. Um, yeah, okay. Rockets, Wizards. You know, Houston, awesome, right? They're uh, they're playing a faster pace now. They're rolling. They're winning. Eight and one ATS, their last nine. Washington not doing well. ATS in, in, in their last nine. And uh, and so I was thinking, you know, don't overthink it. At the very least, take a shot with the uh, with the Houston team total over. Of course, they played very recently, a bunch of games ago at, at, at Houston. And Houston rolled them, you know, high-scoring game. Houston uh, won and covered, and, and, they, and the game soared over. Uh, so maybe you want to think that this is going to be a uh, – going to go differently from that game but i don't know at, at the very least leaning houston team total over and uh gotta be leaning houston and the and the over right i mean do you try first off we don't trust the rockets on the road so now right. we have the rockets playing very good basketball going up against the we don't try, well the we, we don't trust them to cover but i think we trust them to continue playing the style that they've been playing right yeah i mean i think it's sort of a product of their head coach, but I also we we're talking about this Washington Wizards team that's completely banged up right now. Thank God Rashawn Holmes is in the lineup because when he's not in the lineup, then they have absolutely no net presence whatsoever. Kuzma game time decision, Abdia out. Abdia, you know, always know is going to put out 100% Bagley out. And then for the Rockets, all of this is combined with Sangoon being out, with him being out. Jalen Green has just gone off. So over the last five games right now, we have Houston 5-0 and playing a third fastest pace in the league and Washington playing a first fastest pace in the league. But what's interesting, uh, oh, no, that's cool, Robert. I mean, I, it's more of a psychological situation. I've got you. Uh, Orlando's a very good defensive team. Very, very good. Great defensive rebounding team. Just a great rebounding team. So you don't don't worry if, if your cap took you there. So. Uh, Let's go. Uh, here we go. And Chang Kim in the house says, what up, guys? Can I get a winning two-teamer? Uh, mm. So best bet from each of us for our guy, Chang Kim. Let's put that here. And I hope your friend who had the motorcycle uh, accident is doing okay, Chang. So let's roll here. Uh, Wizards, so as I said, a key point to this is these are the fastest paces in the NBA over the last five games, but it's not that fast. 100.2 for Houston and 101 for the Wizards. Let's take a look at the line history here. Great to have Dan Cowley in the chat for all these games as well. We have the Wizards plus nine and a half and minus one oh two. Open plus nine and a half and minus one eleven. So we've had you know a seven cent move on the one side from minus one oh one to minus one oh eight on uh, the Rockets. Uh, from a total side of things here, we have it sitting at two twenty seven and a half, minus one fourteen to the over. Open up at two twenty seven and a half minus one oh six to the over. So eight cent move to the over. Uh, let's get into the cash flow then for this spot here, 93% of the tickets on Houston and 99% of the cash. So everybody and their mama expecting the Rockets to take care of business. There's our guy smoking tree in the house. I did copy and paste your action smoking tree. So we'll go over all that. And thank you for sharing it. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Rockets coming on their fifth straight win and seventh in the last eight games, 117, 103 at home over the Cavaliers. These last three wins, you know, without Sangoon, Green averaging 26.3 points per game, 8.7 rebounds, shooting 49 from the floor and 45.8 from three. A Cam Whitmore out of the lineup with a knee injury. Wizards coming off their fourth straight loss, 130, 104 at home versus Celtics. They're 2 and 12 since the All Star break, and they have five rotation players out. So a uh, Kuzma. Uh, Adia, they don't, you know, a lot of people do not think Kuzma will be available. Kula Bali, Tyus Jones unavailable. So it's just a, I mean, you got Patrick Baldwin Jr. out there, uh, you know, Jules Bernard, Johnny Davis, Jared Butler. With all that being said, I am interested in the Wizards early. I have a feeling that the Rockets just, you know, they're they're leaving home. They've been so successful at home. Are we? Are you telling me that that they're going to come in? Locked and loaded. I, you have ninety nine percent of the cash on the Rockets. It just seems like one of those spots where. It just seems like one of those spots where the the public take a bath. Uh, and and I back the Wizards in these situations. And if you have them full game, you're screwed. They just they can't put it together for 
for 48 minutes, but can they put it together for less than that? Troy Torrance says road faves that are laying more than two position, two possessions. Uh, and their record is sub 500. They're only 33% against the spread in December. So, uh, Take it away for us here, Pete. Uh, I, I think there was. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm. If it's 99% of the cash on the Rockets, and the the whole uh, world is on the Rockets, well, yes, I'm going to be on the Wizards. I'm gonna be on the Wizards, and I don't want to double up, so it'll either be a first quarter or first half bet. Pete, take it away. Uh, what do you think of my uh, thoughts? I, I hope you cash. I have no problem throwing some coin on NBA games. This one, I'm gonna pass. Okay. Well, I expect. It's, I'm not sure if it's gonna be first quarter or first half. Uh, I'm going to be on the Wizards. I'm going to wait too for the market to mature a little more because I would like to see uh, the line not move off the number at 99. percent Then I know I will be on the Wizards early. Uh, and then, and then it's going to be tough deciding between first quarter, and first half. But I'm telling you what: if 99 percent of the cash is on the Rockets and this line doesn't move, then I will double up on first quarter and first half. Okay, let's roll on. 7.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, Pistol, we have Pelicans, Brooklyn. Yeah, you know, the Pels, rolling. Good, great. ATS, under-trending. Nets returning from a long trip. They have not been uh, been uh, been doing well. Um, I was thinking maybe a shot with the under, and, you know, of course the Nets are just kind of embarrassment right now. The Pels are very reliable. But, you know, I've been reading that, 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 you know, the Nets have been having, you know, talks and trying to, like, get on the same page and all that bullshit, be unselfish and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So maybe I don't really want to fade them here, getting this many points at home, even though they've been terrible and the Pelicans have been, have, have been so good uh, ATS. Lean under. As far as the spread is concerned, I guess I'd be leaning Nets. Yeah, the Pelicans have been playing so well on the road. This opened up at seven at Pinnacle and moved to seven and a half. So we have a half point move towards the Pelicanos. You see a lot of eights on the board, uh, just not here. And then from a oh, – sorry, I thought I had the total up. Um, sorry, let me just move over here. I thought I had the total up. Please tell me I have the total up. Yes, I do. From a total side of things, this right now is sitting at 215 and a half. Opened up at 216 and a half. We have a one-point move to the under. And then cash flow – here you have 57% of the tickets and 97% of the cash on the Pelicans. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's a big enough move. Uh, Zachary Griffin says, uh, Jimmy, what's the plan to cover all Thursday, Friday NCAA games to get your breakdowns? Uh, we're going to start with college basketball. So we'll start with college basketball. Uh, we're going to start at noon. We'll go right into college basketball. Uh, we'll have the cappers in studio. It'll be all in studio. And they're going to cap it with us. So we'll... We'll hammer it like that. So that's the plan for for Pub Palooza. So uh, every game, you know, will be capped. We'll start with it, and we'll have I'll have guests in studio giving us their looks, and we're gonna have a lot of it, and we're gonna have best bets. We're gonna have all everything. So they're gonna be long shows at Pub Palooza. We'll be in the studio. We'll be live, but but we'll get right to college basketball. College basketball will be the most important. We'll get right into it, and we'll have multiple looks from multiple cappers. And everything will be live in studio. Okay, so uh, let's roll on here. I don't know, Justin McKelvey. I think I'm going to move on it. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to move on it, Justin. Uh, I really am. I think I'm going to move on. I don't think it's going to be a waffle, but I am one to know my waffle. Wait here, let's go. Uh, so I just kind of look at the cash again. Sorry, because my mind got off of it. Oh yeah, fifty-seven and ninety-seven on the Pelicans, and fifty-five percent of tickets on the under. So big bets coming in on the Pelicanos. They're four and one over their past five. Twenty-third fastest pace in the NBA. Ninety-five point eight possessions a game. They're shooting forty-nine point five from the field and thirty-seven point two from three over that stretch. Uh, Brooklyn nineteenth fastest pace. They're shooting forty-five point seven from the field and thirty-five point eight from three. Pelicans coming off their second straight win, six and seven games, one twenty-six, one seven at home versus the Blazers. This team hasn't been over, uh, sorry, hasn't been 15 games over 500 since 2011. A very good basketball team, 15 and five over the last 20. And nine of those 15 wins have come on the road. They've been so good on the road this year, 21 and 13. In that victory over the Blazers, CJ went off against his former team, went for 30. The Nets come in off their third state loss in fifth and six games, 122, 115 in overtime in San Antonio on Sunday. This is their third game in four days. This is a tired team. You know, Cam Thomas is playing very well since coming 
uh, back from the ankle injury over the last five games, you know, averaging 26.8 points per game. But Michael Bridges is just nowhere to be found. He shot 29.7% from the field over the last three games of the road trip. They just can't seem to get on the same page. Does that mean the Pelicans take care of business here? We hear from Troy Torrance saying that the Pelicans are the best spot on the board. It says road mm. favorites between six and a half and nine and a half market moving towards them and 80% of cash on them. 11 and two against the spread 11 and three against the under. So uh, Steve G says, make sure you get a stroll in on the river walk. I can tell you there'll be zero strolls, zero strolls <laughs> on the river walk. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's just, I look, I'm just there to gamble with my best friends. Take it away, Pete. Pelicans, Nets. I already took it away. Pass for me, although definitely leaning under, but pass, 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 pass. So why wouldn't you have interest in the Pelicans here? Uh, they're playing so well on the road. They must win. They're in must-win time. The Nets look like, you know, we, we heard a lot from Dan Kelly saying it wasn't the coach's fault. The coach didn't need to be fired here. And now they look awful. They can't get Cam Thomas and Mikhail Bridges on the same page. Because they had a they had a talk on set. Like imagine if you, me, Jose Bouquet, and Justin McElvey, and a few other guys had a talk, and we were like, we got we got a cap better. We would for a short period of time. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just worried about fading that as a big home favor, as a big home dog. You know. But that talk was on Saturday. Did you see what they did on Sunday? Well, they 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 went to OT as a dog, didn't they? What what happened on Sunday? What happened on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, I guess a dog against the, the San Antonio Spurs team. That's Yeah, who the Spurs are a team that I think is like improving ATS-wise. So, yeah, it wasn't great, but it was something. Huh. Um, interesting. Uh, you know, it just it takes me right back to Hildebrand. When he was on the Jays, he walked into the clubhouse and he wrote, this is a sinking ship on the chalkboard. <laughs> and... Greg Zahn didn't fight him. I, Greg Zahn's supposed to have roid rage, and he wouldn't fight him. I know what's his problem. No one, <laughs> no one did anything about it. But it feels like the Brooklyn Nets are a sinking ship. Yeah, but we're talking about one game. That's it. Just one game. <laughs> I'm not saying they're going to cover, you know, six out of their next ten or anything like that. You know. I'm interested in the Pelicans here. I, I think these games are important to them. Uh, uh, Chang, yeah, Max doing his thing, man. He's doing his thing. He's got you know big following on Twitter. He's got a private account, but he's got a big following on, on Twitter. And he, I, you know, it's it's too bad that we had we don't hang out anymore or talk because he lives like a block away from me. But uh, but he's he's doing his thing, man. He's uh you know chicken tenders and honey, and you know he's at uh, massage parlors late at night. And if he loses, you know he's under the bridge. It's nothing's changed, uh, and I hope he's doing great wherever he is. Uh, you know, miscapping with him. Uh, Steve G says Alamo tour. If the Alamo is my nutsack, possibly. <laughs> Let's move on to the next spot on the board. 8 p.m. Eastern. We have, and I'm very interested in the Pelicans. 8 p.m. Eastern. Dallas Mavericks, 39 and 29, 18 and 14 on the road at the San Antonio Spurs, 15 and 53, 8 and 24 at home, Frost Bank Center in San Antonio, Texas. Dallas, four and one over their past five. Oh, sorry, Pete, you want to set this up, and then I'll hammer these numbers. No, nah, yeah, no, I, 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 I'd, I'd rather not set it up because I thought the under was a good bet. I think I bet it at two thirty-two, and now it's up to two thirty-four and headed higher. So I guess I'm on the wrong side. But this is a pretty important game for these two teams, right? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's a big game. Spurs are getting a big number at home, right? Dallas six straight covers. Spurs covering. Dallas, you know, trying to avoid the play-in tournament. They're playing well. It's a big game for both these teams. And I thought maybe we would see, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe maybe the under would be a good bet. I think I got 232. Now it's like, what's a 235? All right. Made made a mistake there. I guess I'm still leaning under, but probably wrong. Well, this was the only bet I made pre-show in NBA. I, I took the Spurs plus nine. Mm -hmm. I, I really like this spot for San Antonio. And, and I'll explain why here. But the line is now, I got it at plus nine, minus 111. Now you get a plus nine, minus 106. Now, you could have got it at plus nine, minus 101 at 1217. So at least it's moved a little bit back. There's been a little bit of buyback. But uh, the Mavericks are the fifth fastest team in the NBA in the last five games, and they're not even getting 100 possessions a game. That's how slow down the NBA is. And keep that in mind when you're looking at totals. They're shooting the ball very well, though, 51.2 from the field and 
but 31.8 from three. So they're shooting very well from the field, not hitting their threes. Spurs two and three over the last five, 98.25 possessions game. That's 10th fastest, 46.5 from the field and 36% from three. Cash flow on this one here. <coughs> 26% of the tickets are on the Spurs and 89% of the cash. I love those numbers. 32% of tickets and 92% cash on the under. So you'd, you know, would have thought that that would be moving towards the under. But this is it for me. This is the final four, final of four meetings. They've met each other three times. And Dallas has absolutely destroyed them. They've beaten the Spurs by an average of 18.3 points per game. Then the Mavericks come off their fifth win in six games, 107-105 at home versus the Nuggets on Sunday. Everybody talking about, you know, Kyrie's left-handed Florida. Everybody talking about the Mavs being the real deal because of what they did to the Nuggets. They out-rebounded uh, the Nuggets 60-37. to Luka went for 37. You know, Dallas in the tie with Sacramento and Phoenix, basically virtual tie for sixth spot. So they're going to keep playing hard, but Josh Green out of the lineup, missing multiple weeks with a right ankle sprain. Uh, the Spurs come in off snapping their three-game losing streak with a 122-115 overtime victory at home over the Nets on Sunday. Uh, Wemby, you know, 33-15, 7 and 7. Uh, Vassell fit 25 and, and Johnson 24. I I just I think that when a team keeps destroying you, at some point there's gonna be pushback. And maybe I'm wrong here. But I think this is the perfect spot to back the Spurs. I think that they can be in this basketball game. I think this is a letdown spot for Dallas after the huge victory at home over the Nuggets. And and I'm on this. I'm on the Spurs. Uh, Troy says, I think if you want San Antonio, you want the nine. I got the nine. Uh, Kelsey looking at the Spurs at plus eight and a half. And uh, our friend Sal says uh, the over under two and a half reach arounds. Loshak gives. <laughs> he thinks. Whoa, whoa, Sal. What happened? I thought you would be receiving them, but he thinks that there's a chance you might be giving the reach rounds. So, a lot of a lot of reach round talk on the show today. Sal, wow, wow. I'll reach okay. around and steal your motherfucking chips. That's what oh. I'll be reaching around to get. How about that? Big poker tournament. Big poker tournament. Oh yeah. Big big poker tournament on Friday evening. I can't wait. And after like, that, we go back to the, to the. Where'd all my chips go? <laughs> JPZ and LJ concert. So look, I'm on the Spurs, and it's my favorite bet on the board in NBA. Now I could end up doubling up on the Pelicanos, and I could be doubling up on the Wizards, for, and I'm not going to double up on the Spurs. But I really like the spot. I really do. Uh, do you have any interest in the Spurs after my breakdown? Don't yeah. push you in the direction, but no, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you on this one. It makes. I mean, I was leaning Spurs as well. I just didn't quite understand why the line was so high. So I wanted to uh, hear what you had to say. I, I, I agree that the um, that the full game is probably uh, the way to go. But I'm gonna take the first half. I'm gonna take the. Uh, let me see. Uh, handicap first half. Let's look four at and this. a half. Oh, before you do, Sorry, look at this. Roy Torrance's mm -hmm. best bet is this. Mavericks to win by one through one to one to ten. Best bet. Wow. Mavericks 1 to 10 plus 185. Interesting. Sorry, you were thinking about moving on the first half? No, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the Spurs first half plus 5 minus 111 current line at uh, at Pinnacle. I will add that one. Yes. God, that makes me want to double up. Low shack on the Spurs first half. Because this is the, the number where I usually really like first half over the full game. Wow, maybe I join you. You got first half. What was the numbers in the juice? Sorry, my man. At Pinnacle, plus five, minus 111. I'm very, very interested. There's Nate Dog 420 in the house. Okay, let's go into the final spot on the board before we cap our first baseball game of the season. Major League uh, Baseball starts at 6.05 a.m. tomorrow morning in Korea. Uh, there's two games over there in Korea. Now, the whole slate starts Saturday the 28th. But here we go. Denver Nuggets and Minnesota Timberwolves. We've had Lamont Williams give us the max bet on Denver. And I get it. Situationally, I get it. But there is – I didn't move on it. And I, I just felt it was kind of fishy. This total sitting at 213, which is where it opened. Uh, Pete, the – I'm just going to set up the line and then we'll hand it over to you. The spread still sitting at 7.5. So this, this opened up at 7.5 and went down to 7. Now it's back at seven and a half. So we're sitting here with just six cents of movement towards the Nuggets coming off that loss to the Wolves, but the line really isn't moving in their direction. And you have 79% of the tickets and 96% of the cash on the Denver Nuggets. 
Uh, this there being these situations with the Nuggets this year, Pete, where I'm like, well, why is the line not moving? And then the Nuggets still take care of business in a revenge spot. Take it away here for us, Pistol. Your thoughts on Nuggets, Timberwolves, and I'll close it up. I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> at least Denver first half seems like just just the ultimate no-brainer, aren't they? I mean, Denver's off the straight-up loss, winning before that, covering. Minnesota back-to-back, won at Utah. Now they're returning home. I don't know, man. How do you not take Denver? And I know that uh, that Denver was like, uh, was like, why can't you guys rebound? So rebound props for, for, for Denver look also no-brainer-ish. But uh, you guys are know the NBA much better than I do. But as as I'm sitting here right now, I got to hear what you guys have to say. Denver at least first half, and Denver at least rebound props over. Got to think of it, right? I thought that Cat. Well, we know Cat's out, but I thought that Rudy and Nas are going to miss this game too. Uh, but yeah, their game time decisions. Rudy's missed two straight with the rib injury. Nas missed just with the head injury. So I thought they were out here but they're just game time decisions at this point so the timberwolves come home after a six game road trip i mean it's exactly where you want to fade a team but in come in the nba champs nuggets had their five game winning streak snapping that 107 105 loss at dallas and they were out rebounded 60 to 37 angry group so why is the line not moving well i think it's it didn't it 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 wait let me see i think the first line i saw it depends on where you're looking at i mean it opened yeah, fan duel at three <laughs> And it opened at FanDuel at three. It opened at Caesars at four. It opened at Bet three sixty five at four. Okay, well, DraftKings four. Let's see what I Bet mean? Online I know those are all opened. shit books, but you know. So Bet Online opened it. So Bet Online Pinnacle. These books were being cautious. They didn't open until eight this morning. So at this number, I mean, it's uh, Justin saying Ant hurt his head. Duncan on John Collins' head. Red girl looking at Jokic over. I, I'm just, I'm just a little surprised about this line. Uh, you know, and maybe at four or five you had enormous value, but you have it here. I don't know. And, and Andrew says Denver comes in mad. Hmm. Yeah, I, um, I. It makes perfect sense, but I just, I'm a little shocked that this line isn't moving. Which tells me that maybe at this number, at this number today, it's not moving. So maybe this it just tells me that either Nas or Rudy are going to play. I don't know. I uh, I can understand why anybody would be on Denver, but I don't think I'm going to be on it at this point. All right, I'll take I'll take Jokic uh, over eleven and a half rebounds minus one twenty one. That's the current line at uh, at Pinnacle. If it loses, that's all right. I'll take it. Loshak is on Jokic over 11 and a half rebounds. What was the juice? Minus 121, current line pinnacle. So, Loshak, you have Jokic over 11 and a half boards. You have the Spurs first half plus five at minus 111, and that's all I have you for. Is that right? Yeah. I'm interested okay. in that. You, you, what, what's up with that friggin' total in the, uh, in the, in, in the Spurs game? Should that be that high? I don't get it. I'm going to be on Brandon Miller over 16 and a half points. I'm I'm either going to be on Wizards first quarter or first half, but I'm not going to bet it when the show ends. I'm going to wait. But Pelicans first half and full game, I'm going to move on it. I think I add this your Spurs action, so I double up on both. That makes me nervous. But and all right, then, you know what? You can you can add on the the, the Mavs Spurs um, full game under 235 minus 110. That's uh, that's current line of pinnacle. Whatever. Under, I bet I already bet it. So, uh, Mavs Spurs under two thirty five minus one ten current line pinnacle. And Dan Kelly, what are you on? If we could see what your thoughts <laughs> are on this card, I would be extremely interested. All right, that is NBA. So now our first baseball game of the season, and we bring on a couple of ringers. A couple of ringers. First off, star of the Balking Dead, who's been so excited about the opportunity to him. And what a season he had last year. Absolutely spectacular. The big black book back in business. Usually we'd be talking about him in the warm climate of California, but he has moved to Tennessee. It's cold in Tennessee. Please welcome 
our friend Sharpie to the show. Sharpie, bro, how are you? Balls yeah. cold, bro. Balls cold out here. I got three layers on each way, though, bro. And, uh, you know, we're, we're still related to Moby Dick, so whale hunting's got to get happening in the cold. It has to happen. It has to happen. It's nice to see you again, Sharpie. And let's bring on another ringer, star of Say Hey Plays of the Day. You're going to see him capping baseball every single day here on Pub Sports Radio, and he's here to rock right now. Please welcome San Antonio's finest, our friend Jose Sweet Tea Tits Bouquet. Jose, how are you? Doing well. Uh, it's nice to see you guys. Uh, Pete, do you have anything to say to, to Sharpie? Because this is the first time I think you guys are on screen since the incident, Pete. No, uh, not much. Bro, it's life. Y'all freaking make, make like, little things. <laughs> no, it's great to mid-tay. see you, Sharpie. It's great to fucking see. Are you? Is he going to? Are you going to Palooza? <laughs> nah, man. I'm uh, I'm trying to get to the Kentucky Derby though, since it ain't too far from there. So I'm gonna try to get out there right in like a month. Oh, yeah, All right. Man. Well, magic. I, I I got I gotta really start tuning into the freaking Walking Dead every freaking day because last last year that was just leaving money on the table. Anyone who didn't do that, very very impressive, Sharpie. Thank you, thank you. But at least you trusted me in the playoffs. You're like, I don't even cap baseball. I'm just betting Sharpie's bets. We're doing. Of all course, that. I trusted you. <laughs> the problem isn't trust. The problem is time. Fucking life. The fucking people are like, oh, life goes by so fast. No, days go by so fast. Like, oh, damn it, it's eight thirty. I missed the friggin' Bach and Dead, and half the games have already started. Ooh. I'm gonna make an effort though this year to catch every friggin' episode, either live or taped. Appreciate it. The first game of our young season sees you, Darvish. And Tyler Glass now going head to head. Let me just set the lines up and then Jose Bouquet will take over. This line opened up with the Dodgers at minus 187. They're now at minus 196. Had a nine cent move there from a total side of things here. And again, we need to talk about this stadium and parameters. This total sitting at nine right now at Pinnacle. Opened up at eight and a half. Got up to nine at 820 this morning. And it has stayed there. It's minus 115 to the under, but it's a nine here. Uh, My bookie hanging a nine. Will Hill hanging an eight and a half. And then the rest of the books offshore are hanging eight and a half. And then when we get over to the cash flow, for this first game of the young season, we have no help. We have 5,578 yeah. tickets and no help. But we do have help on the total. On the total, we have 82% of the tickets on the over and 97% of the cash on that over. Jose, take it away and host, uh, take over hosting duties for the Korea series in South Korea that starts off the MLB season. Yeah, so I've watched this line basically like the entire show, and it's been, you know, steadily climbing up. We're seeing some minus 200 nows, uh, which is interesting. I, you know, I think the Dodgers should be faded. I, you know, not in the sense that they're a bad team, but in the sense of that these prices are probably just inflated because they're the Dodgers. They've got all these fucking people, and they're going to be great. Uh, but I'm, I'm a guy of the mindset of the Dodgers will disappoint in the fact that they'll go under their win total, which is like 103 wins, I think, which is crazy. But I mean, it's the Dodgers. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if they still got it. But I I think that personally, this Dodgers team will lose in the playoffs again, and then they'll fire Dave Roberts, even though that he's he's Otani's contract and all that shit. And then they'll just hire Alex Cora and break my soul. Um, That's what I think will happen. I don't think it'll be an interesting series, but season, I should say, but glass now healthy. For now, we all know what he does. I, I looked at his last three starts and you know, obviously spring training, but his last two, especially three innings, no hits, five Ks, one walk. Uh, the one before that, five and a third, no hits, eight Ks. And that was spring training. So obviously take it with a grain of salt, but he's been pitching well as of late. Darvish, I think he'll be right at home. He'll This is, you know, obviously his career, not Japan, but I think he's been in this atmosphere and environment plenty of times over there. So uh, I honestly was leaning first five under here. And, and Sharpie, we'll talk about you're the, the spring training Don. I know you, you're always betting spring training games and keeping an eye on these teams, and especially since it's the Dodgers and Padres. So I'm leaning first five under here, but I want to hear what you have to say about this game, Sharpie. Um, I'm laughing at all these over betters, bro. I mean, if you they watch the Dodgers and the Padres beat up on Korean pitching. 
Jimmy, can you tell <laughs> me how many Korean pitchers are in the MLB? Um, I miss our old friend number 99. He's the only <laughs> one still on an active like they have is active, bro. Is no, he's gone. Bro. He's gone. He's in Korea. Okay. This year. So, yeah. yeah, they're cooked, bro. They have yeah. no starting pitching. So they're beating up on bums, bro. Like, wait until Darvish gets in that. Uh, and now you got to take real live pitching after just beating up on kids that don't belong out there. That to me is a joke. Darvish has owned my Dodgers forever. Yep. Um, 13 games in his career, has a 2.57 ERA. His last five games versus the Dodgers, it gets better. 2.27 ERA with going six innings or more in every damn start. Taking the fact he was hurt last year, guys. He's not hurt. He's healthy. They're saying no restrictions on him this year. And he's looked good. He went 4.1 innings with one and run in his last start in spring training. He owns this team other than Freddie Freeman. And then we get Tyler Glass now. That's where I'm on the other side of you, Jose, is this ain't the Dodgers year to choke. We've not had starting pitching. We've gotten to the playoffs every year off of fucking Clayton Kershaw and so and so and so. No one, no, now we got Glass now, Yamamoto at the front. Dude's throwing 97 plus. You need to have flamethrowers in the playoffs. Strikeouts and home runs win you games. And uh, we went and got one of the better strikeout pitchers in the game. And there's only been one guy on this team who's even seen Glass now. And they should sit Bogerts with those putrid ass numbers he has versus him. So, um, big advantage glass now, first time through the lineup. I'm on that first three under two and a half at minus 105. And I'm on the wow. first five under four and a half um, at minus 110. I both on MGM. That's where I'm betting on right now. Um, I don't, I just think one of these guys needs to be on for that four and a half, let alone if both. I think this is off by a run. When are we getting an eight and a half, nine? With Glass now and Darvish, because they're in Korea, beating up on Korean pitchers the last few days. Now, if you're going to bet the Dodgers, I'll say this. They've won 14 games in spring training. They've won every game by two runs or more. You either run line them and just let it go, or you bet the other side. There is no if ands, or buts right now. I believe a couple years back, it hit 84% that way with the Dodgers. It's going to be like that again this year. When they win, they're going to win. I can't wait. It's going to be a fun game, and I'm glad that we're both on the unders. That makes me feel a lot better about myself. I loved when he said well. everyone was on the over, bro. I was going to panic yeah. if he said everyone was on the under. Like, don't, don't do that. Go move the way you should. Bet the over like a bunch of yuppies and let me cash these unders. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> and so, Jose, is this your first say, hey, play the official action? Yeah, no, I'm on it as well. Four and a half, minus 105, basically the same line as well. First five. As well, I also uh, shot to Mike Cam, and this is my, you know, this is my old self uh, creeping into it. I was interested in a, in a Hassan Kim RBI prop just for the, you know, he's Korean, obviously. It's plus two ten. Shot to Mike. I considered it. Probably not going to move on it. Uh, why am I not going to move on it? Uh, I had again. I took my like resume of all my records for what I do well and what I do poorly. Uh, props. Uh, a whopping minus 30 units in two years. So I'm not betting props. No, thank you. I'm good. Uh, so I'll, I'll just look at that RBI prop, think about it, and not jot it down. If I start hitting them, maybe I'll bet them, but no thanks. Important note that Jose said he went over exactly every single angle over the last two years that he's bet and went over what has succeeded and what has not. And it's crucial. Everybody yeah, needs it was to disgusting looking at the numbers for some of them, but yeah. And what was your best angle for people who are interested? Yeah, uh, well, Mike will rejoice in the chat. It was uh, team totals, uh, of course. You know, Mike, uh, not flush Allen. Uh, he always, uh, you know, celebrating all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, 20 units in two years uh, up. So uh, that's, you know, I looked at that. By the way, and full game totals as well uh, was also my best thing there. Uh, first fives, I was up 1.3 units in two years. So, you know, kind of, you know, negative, I guess. But yeah, I uh, I, I looked at uh, my best thing here with the uh, team totals as well. And if I had to play it, uh, I'd probably stick with the Dodgers. But I, I think the game's going under, so it didn't really make sense. Uh, I, I shout out to one of the Earl brothers. I forget which one. Now. I think it was Nick. Uh, I saw him. He's going to play uh, Padres team total over three minus 120. 
don't hate that as well. But I will say there's a, a lovely little uh, website that has the uh, records for your best uh, team total teams from last year. Of course, your best team total over team last year, the Dodgers, 95 and 68 up 15 units. Right behind them, Pete, I know you love betting this team. The Washington Nationals, 92 and 67, up 15.14 units last year. Wow. 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 So. Well, great stuff. So we have Sharpie on the first three under two and a half and the first five under four and a half. Jose, first five under four and a half. Sharpie, do you have the juice for your action? Minus 105 on the first three, 110 on the first five. Minus one ten. We have our first official action. Pistol Pete, after hearing that, is there a move you want to make? Are you going to wait? 6.05 a.m. It pops off. So we have the first game of Major League Baseball going off in 16 hours. Well, I mean, I already, I already, while you guys are talking, I already tailed the first three and first five unders. I'm not going to be a dick and add that to my official record and be like, look at what a great capper I am. Definitely tailed them, though. Well, there you have it. Yeah, I'm interested no. uh, in joining the fellows as well. Uh, Sharpie, let everybody in the chat know where they can find you on X, my friend. If you don't know where to find me, just keep it that way, guys. I'm not that guy that's going <laughs> to talk to you. I'm not going to be friendly to you. But if you follow me, I'll give you fucking winners, bro, because that's what I do. Have a good it. one, guys. Thanks for joining us. There he is, Sharpie in the house. Well, Jose, stick with us while we review all action. This is my last show until you see me in San Antonio on Thursday. Now, uh, the squad will see me on Wednesday night in San Antonio. It is betting with Bouquet tomorrow. Let's go over a couple yeah. things here from the show. Clint, star of the Die Hard MMA podcast, gave us his second best bet of 2024, Peyton Talbot. Peyton Talbot. How do we not tail that? I, I'm going to bet that immediately actually uh peyton talbot for clint then uh viper nb he's on the bruins minus one and a half so am i he's on the red wings minus one vancouver minus one he's also interested in colorado minus one half minutes so minus one and a half he's waiting for the breakdowns uh serious business uh happy birthday he got his words of wisdom from low shack that's all he wanted happy mm -hmm. birthday but pete we did say that we would give uh our guy chang kim the uh, look from for both of us a two team parlay so please put that together as i review all action uh dan kelly says real hisatsuna is for the golf tournament again i keep thinking all i can when i think of a golf tournament i just think of the valero open and i keep forgetting what the name of this one is man uh but real hisatsuna and i'm going to be moving on the golf tournament as well because i'd like to have some golf action while we're in san antonio i'm on the bruins puck line minus one and a half of plus 115 uh, I am also on the Lightning and the Blues. I got the Lightning at plus 116, and I, it was plus 119, excuse me, and I got the Blues at plus 186. I heard there was a big move towards the Blues at some books uh, because uh, a Noonan's going to be in net, but still a plus 180 at uh, 365, so there's been no change there. Then first period action. I'm going to be on the Habs and the Blackhawks first period, not plus a half, not plus nothing. For all the money. Hurricanes for Mikey Money says revenge spot uh, as well. And also Mikey Money very confident with the Canucks to hammer the Sabres on the second half of back-to-back. -back. So that's my NHL action. There is an enormous amount of action from Pete in the player prop market. He reviews it all on <laughs> at the end of our hockey breakdown. So if you just go back there, you get all of his action with the, the lines and the books and all of that. Then in college basketball... We have – sorry, move over here. Uh, Low Shack's on a Wagner first half plus two at minus 115. Taint play today's Wagner, Howard under 128.5. And Tone Megan levels play today's Wagner first half money line. Mikey, money's – your grandma's wearing your sister's panties again. Wagner plus three. Billy Friedrich, pig milk play today. Virginia first half money line plus 117. Stacks play today the under 120.5 in Colorado State, Virginia. Jay Smooth, smooth balls play today. Cornell first half. At plus six. Well, Low Shack's on the first half over 63 and a half in LSU minus two and a half in North Texas LSU. I'm very interested in joining on LSU. Boston College Providence stayed off. Low Shack's on the first half over 74 in Xavier, Georgia. He's on the first half over 74 and a half in Cornell, Ohio State. He's on the full game over 141 and a half in South Florida, UCF. Richmond, Virginia stay off. Minnesota yeah. Butler stay off. Kansas City State, Kansas State, excuse me, Iowa stay off. And UC Irvine, Utah Utes stay off. I'm interested in Tarleton State. It's a big number, and i got to spend more time with it. 
Uh, that's the CIT. And then we stayed off Abilene, Texas A&M. I'm going to be on Brandon Miller over 16 and a half points. Uh, I'm not sure how hard I hit the Wizards. I'm going to wait to see the, the market uh, just mature a little longer. Uh, Pelicans first time in full game. I expect to bet that as soon as the show's over. And I think I might double up now on the Spurs. Loshak moved on the first half, and I like it. Uh, he's also on the under 235 in that one. Loshak's on Jokic over 11 and a half rebounds. Lamont Williams' max bet was Denver Nuggets. And then spreadsheet play today from Ron Crawford is the Dodgers minus one in baseball. It is the Leafs, and it is the uh, in South Florida as well. And then we heard from Sharpie and Jose for the first MLB game of the season. And that is that. That's yeah, I have a couple things before we go. Sure, sure. If I uh, first of all, fuck you, Saturated. What a fucking annoying-ass game that was. Uh, hopefully, you'll be at Pablo Palooza, and maybe you'll get your stake then. But fuck, I should have taken should have, five. You should have won that bet. But you yeah, got, I should have. You got I on your, have. your horse. You, start, you, you, were, you were drunk out there. You were playing drunk out there. Yeah, you know, it's a four-hour show. At, at some, it's like Tyson. You know, you just get punched drunk, and you know, it's, it just happens like that. It was what, it was well, much longer than four hours. We almost hit five hours, by the way, Pete. Our first show that almost hit five hours. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, secondly, uh, Pete, this is a question for just you and I. Uh, Pete, do you what sure. kind of headphone jack do you have in your computer? Just a regular one. Round one. Okay, cool. I'm gonna take that to note because you're getting headphones from me for uh, at Pablo Palooza, uh, so we can wear that and eliminate all your echo. Uh, was there a problem three, today again? No, it's just slight, just slight. But uh, okay. we're gonna we're throwing some headphones. It's gonna be great. And it'll be awesome. I promise. Okay. All right. Three. Uh, real quick. So I mentioned the best uh, team total over team uh, last year for baseball. If you guys are wondering at home, the best team total under teams the white Sox and the a's obviously 17 units up for the white Sox, which is pretty nuts so hopefully we'll see how all that works out and finally uh number four it'll be very exciting to see all of you i cannot wait uh pete uh don't fuck up and miss your flight i'm excited to see oh, you no. it'll be, yeah. uh, it'll be pete's, pete's bringing somebody too Oh, oh yes, I, I, we forget about I'm not, that. I'm he, not bringing. I'm bringing Sam, not a, not a person. You're right. You're right. He he did mention not bringing Sam to the beach, but that is something he might. Well, you have know, done, do so. as I do as I say, not as I do. Uh, exactly. Big Scott nonstop streams all through Pablo Don't worry about yes. that. Uh, my show my show is going to be pushed one hour because of the alcoholism. So we're going to push it one hour. It'll be 12 p.m. Eastern, but it'll be uh, all in-studio guests, and it's going to be nonstop. Yep, it's going to be a grind. It'll be fun. We'll have live streams as well, obviously, for the basketball games Thursday night. Uh, Friday night, uh, I do not think so, because we will be poker tournamenting uh, at our friends, the Brooklyn Square Card Parlor. So shout out to them. We appreciate them for hosting it. It's going to be a lot of fun, and again, just do a Google Maps if you don't know where it is. When you get there, uh, hit your ride with someone. I'm more than welcome to take people there as well. $100 buy-in. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Pete. Pete, are you going to put a bounty on yourself, Pete? Hmm? Whatever <laughs> whatever people want is, is fine. Oh, yeah. We need Absolutely. Everyone, uh, we're all going to have $20 bounties. Ah, yeah. Sure. Then I'm, no, I'll have 40 gonna... Oh, okay. 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 But we're all, well, I forgot. We forgot to talk about that. We all have the $20 bounty in front of us. Sure, it's a hundred dollar entry plus your twenty dollars in front of you. All right, and that is for everyone. Everyone. Okay. So really, cool. the hundred twenty dollar entry. I forgot because yeah. that's what we did last year. It's great. All right. Well, I'm just glad that I don't think I'm gonna look like this this year. But uh, I am excited to see <laughs> Pete looking like that. I can't yes. get over Connor as well. Just this little peak creepy. <laughs> Yes, but oh. of course, sign up for our March Madness pools, confidence pool. I just signed up for both. The bracket challenge will be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Uh, and again, Pablo Palooza, we're we're here, guys. We've been talking about it for months. We're finally here. James the Bag will be in San Antonio tomorrow. I'm picking up at least two, maybe three people tomorrow. Uh, our friend Dick Schnizzle coming in tomorrow as well. Nice. Uh, Jimmy as well. So don't forget, guys, it's going to be a loaded weekend. Live stream is Thursday night. The show Thursday morning at Southtown 101. 
and who the Saturday? I think Saturday is going to be the day where Jose, all of the boxers. Do you think we goes. should start the shows at eleven forty-five p.m. because that first game's at twelve twenty? Uh yeah. yes. I whatever yeah. you want to do. I I okay. sure, sure. Let's uh, okay. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about. It. Yes, I I'm very flexible, as you know, Jimmy. So you just let me know when you want me, and we'll be there. Uh, but it's going to be a whole lot of fun, Pete. Thanks for sticking out three hours. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. I was a boot camp. All right, everyone, I'm going to dip out. I'll see y'all on Thursday. I love it. There he is, Pistol Pete. There goes Pete. Like short show. This feels like nothing after five hour shows, man. Yeah, it, it it really does. It's like when you're carrying like a thirty pound weight and you just take it off and then you just free yeah, it like Jeremy Yeager. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like yeah, 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 Jeremy Yeager. Yeah, as Pete would call it. All right, it. Uh, let's roll. I got action to get in here, uh, and I've got to head over to sweet, sweet San Antonio. It's freezing cold outside. It's like minus something. And I get to get to the warm. And this weekend, it's gorgeous in San Antonio. Yep, 70s and 80s. That's that's cold for us here, but it's going to be great for you guys. It's not blistering hot. When's Gokster coming over? Gokster's coming with us. You're going to see yeah, Gokster. When's he coming over to your place? Oh, just in the We're not doing He's coming over just to drop his wheels off. Oh, no slumber party? No slumber party. But he's got he's got real, ni real nice wheels, eh? Gokster. Uh, Does he? Oh, yeah. Really nice. Gokster doesn't mess yeah. around, man. Well, he's I'll, I'll tell you. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah, he is raw dog. I'll tell you this there, uh, Jimmy, I want you to, you know, set odds for this real quick, since this is our little bullshit hour now. Uh, me, Gokster, Schnizzle, and Spenny Penny Bombs are going to play and film us golfing on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, who what, can you set the odds? Who do you think uh, is going to come out on top of all this? Maybe I think it'll probably be. Me and Ick versus the Canadians. Who knows, oh, America? You guys can get slaughtered. Really? Now, Ick Schnizzle is really good, but th there's tricks. I don't know if they're going to use head games, but I would get Ick Schnizzle so drunk, so <laughs> fucking drunk. Now, I don't know if they're going to play those. I mean, be, some people don't care about competing like I do. Uh, That's I true. Would, I would get him so drunk. I'd have the Kraken out there, warm Kraken. I'd be just, you know, I'd have him. But... Uh, I don't know if they're going to play dirty like that. If they don't play dirty, you know, uh, we'll see how it bangs out. But, yes, uh, uh, you're in huge trouble. If it's two on two, then it would let us bet on it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I, I figure we'll probably run two on two. And I don't know. I don't know how good Spenny is. And I consider myself probably the worst golfer. So, yeah, I don't think you need to say probably. But Spenny is very like he was a top hockey player. He's 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 got he's athletic. So he he might. I don't know how good he is either, but I imagine he's good. Okay, so what are the odds then? America versus Canada in this? Oh, Canada is minus two hundred. Minus two hundred. Okay, well, go ahead, get your bets in for the U.S. And I can't believe I'm on Team USA. Uh, plus one fifty for us. Go no, ahead, get your money we'll in. Plus one eighty. Plus one. Plus one. Sure, team. great, great. I, I think we win that matchup. I think. I think I will. There's no house. Surprise. We don't need to have. There doesn't need. Why do we have to give Vig to some unknown? Like, it's such so stupid. We're so doctor in, in the giving Vig out for no reason. It's minus two hundred plus two hundred. There's no fucking Vig. Fuck. Who's getting that juice? No one's getting that fucking juice. Uh. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. That. I. It's gonna be great. Uh. And I. My job will now be ick. You have to stay sober. At least oh. through sec sixteen. Oh, dude. we need I, we need a lead. The the tea I would give him in the morning would be f mushroom tea. He would be he'd be he'd be seeing all sorts of colors okay. immediately. Well, don't worry, Billy Friedrich said he'd lay up to minus three fifty, and Nuke also dropping in a minus four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> all right i gotta go i gotta rock i gotta i gotta get some action i gotta pick up bella yeah. uh thank you guys i am i this is i'm giddy uh, i've got my endorphins flying I, this is no drug giddiness i cannot wait <laughs> to set foot in texas man so i just can't fucking wait i can't wait i can't wait i can't fucking wait i can't wait i can't wait can't wait i'll be there tomorrow night with the with the nuke worker and gokster and then it's just uh yep. how much money can you make that's the question I'm asking. How much money can you make this weekend? Uh, I did pretty well yeah. last year. Yeah, you did. I, by the way, after Clint said that Peyton Hillis is his uh, best bet in the UFC, yeah. I went ahead and, and just put three units on it. So I'm going to be sweating my fucking cock and balls off oh, on it on yeah. Saturday night. So uh, that's going to be very fun. That's going to be. I very love it. Fun. I'm going to move on it here in a second too. All right. 
Uh, yeah. Roll that shit. Like that shit. Smoke it. Go get that cash. Uh, thank you all. Billy Friedrich, Bo Jackson, New Corker, Dav, Fenn, Kelly McKinnis, Saturated, Christopher Comantini, Slow Jams, Arsenal, Tori Coker, Big Scott. What a great group. Leonard Porsche Jr. Thank you, guys. Series Business, Dan Kelly. Thank you, guys. Rodney Barton, Philly Eagle Flyer, Ron Crawford, King Al, Coin. Thank you, guys. Kelsey, Jacqueline, Kevin K, Justin McKelvey, Maddie Ice, Andrew G, JPZ, BT, my dude. All you guys, thank you so much uh, for your support. Sean Pulliam, Oldie, Swiggy. Uh, there's going to be a submit button uh, any minute. So it's all going to be rolling. Yep. Please sign up for the contest. Please sign up. Yep. Jose will hammer him tomorrow, but please sign yep. up for the contest. Jose, can you please bless our action and let us into the future, my friend? Of course, Jimmy. It will be uh, nice to see you. Uh, I will uh, next time uh, we see each other. It'll be in person. You know, it's always mm-hmm. nice to see my dad. You know, mm-hmm. I might be the secret family, but it's nice to see him once a year now. So it, you know, it, by the way, Carter told me that when he was pointing at the horses, you know, he said no. I was like, who? What horse? He goes, no. I was point. I was. I was cheering for Jose. He said that he was cheering for Jose. So there you go, Carter. Knows maybe I look like a horse. That's the, maybe that's what he's telling me. I don't know. Thank you. Shout out to Carter. Shout no, out to he Carter. Uh, in the, he he came out with that like an hour afterwards, like out of nowhere. He's just so thinking he, about it, yeah, just on his he, mind. He he's a he's a great kid. I love him. All right, I got to rock. Yeah. Bless our action. Right. Let's get paid in full. I'll see you guys in fucking Texas, man. See you guys. Let's do it, guys. Man. Kelly, shout out to you guys. Don't forget though, I am doing a show tomorrow, so let's hang out tomorrow as well in the morning. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be exciting. Appreciate everyone. Let's change. A los bookmakers.